Hello, 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 and welcome everyone to the land of Odd. I always, as always, as me, I'm your. <laughs> I as always am your host, Vrykirian, and tonight we're going to be trying to finish up Final Fantasy Shadowbringers. That's right, the final patch content, all that 5.5, 5.5, 5 and 5.55. Hopefully try and get it all. I know there's 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 a lot there that uh but hopefully we'll be able to uh, uh grab some of it and, and and get all of it taken care of. Um So, uh as a recap, uh last time we figured out how to uh, essentially break the, the the tempering of a primal on uh, individuals and then we helped Limsa Lominsa deal with um, a, essentially a, a, a small homegrown nationalist movement in the form of one pirate crew that didn't want to get with the program. I think that's all that really happened in 4.4. In, in I can't recall anything else. Uh, it ended, bringing us up to speed, it ended with um, us being introduced to our new Asian friend who is a complete nut bar and uh, a big kind of Final Fantasy X style Bahamut showing up and swooping in and setting fire to Alamigo. Um, sort of? I mean, it didn't seem like a lot of it was burning too severely. Um, and they have something to do with all these big towers that are everywhere all across Aorzia that we have no idea. They just kind of showed up. We don't know what they do. We don't know what they're for. They're just there. And hopefully we'll get some answers to those while we do this. Um... So, to get start, we're going to talk to uh, my favorite Scion. Good news, Vakirian. Thancred and Uriange have finished their tour of Galamald and are on their way back here as we speak. As we still haven't heard anything about the, uh, from, about the towers from the Alliance, I'm hoping they'll be able to shed some lights on, light on things. They're due to arrive any moment. So let's see what they have to say. And so Leish, Tola, and Catboy are here. A welcoming party. You needed to have gone to the trouble. From what I hear, you've been more more than busy enough as is. Honestly, I think you would have waited for me. Honestly, you might have waited for me to return to just before discovering a cure for tempering. As it is, I can't even pretend to be involved. Well, if it's any consolation, I myself was little more than a spectator. The lion's share, the credit, must go to La Alice, Graha, and Rykirian. But I believe I speak for the rest of us when I say we're proud to have rendered what little assistance we could. As you will also have heard, it hasn't been all tales of triumph. Just as you were taking taking a step towards finally addressing the primal threat, a pile of fresh problems landed on our lap. Anyway, it's good to have you back, although I can't help but noticing we're one Oriange short of a scouting party. You haven't lost them, have you? I mean, really, would it be that bad if you did? I mean, Uriange tends to do his best work when everyone thinks he's doing lost. I mean, that's when he did the whole Warrior of Darkness thing. That's when he did his research in the first. Oh, I couldn't lose him if I tried. And I did try. Repeatedly. What? Thinkrid, were you trying to get your partner killed? 
But no. He decided to linger in Alamigo to appraise Rabon and others of how the land lies in Garlemald. Boned. Then perhaps, then perhaps you could do the same for us. Indeed. Just as Lee said. Worse, in fact. Devastation as far as the eye could see. Nerva and... Ill... Illard? Ill... Ill... Oh, and the third. It's a Imperial Regiment. However, we're notable by their absence. Might they have met their end at the hands of Xenos and Fandaniel? Perhaps. Or perhaps they simply lost the will to fight. No. You see, the capital has been plunged into de a deathly silence. One with, <laughs> with one exception. The Imperial Palace. It's full of crazy laughing at all times. Really weird. Don't know what the deal there is. It was a busy place before the war, but it's <laughs> grown busier still, with throngs of soldiers and civilians working their day and night to rebuild, or rather, transform it. Transform it? To what? That is a difficult question to answer. The construction is vast and unsettling to behold, like something from a nightmare. According to Uriange, certain aspects of his design were clearly devised with the manipulation of ether in mind. Magitech, in other words. Yet as unnerving as said edifice was, it was nothing next to the sight of the builders. They swarmed to the place like insects, working with nary a word exchanged between them. No one overseeing construction, no one barking orders. It was as if they were possessed. Or tempered. We wanted to investigate more closely, but given our suspicion, it seemed wiser not to take the risk. Hmm. If Van Daniel could bind Bahamut to his will, might he have done the same to the people of Garlemald? He crit his charisma roll. Mm. The worst type of Assian. A bard Assian. Whatever the truth may be, this information is certain to prove valuable. You have our thanks. Well, be sure to save some for Uriange. Which reminds me, I have a message from Alamigo. Please... Send help. I suppose I should have led with that one. Rabon is hosting a meeting to discuss the latest findings on the towers, and he requested our presence. <sighs> then why not leave that to us? You must be weary from your mission. No. No, no, I'm fine. Those towers have been on my mind since I first spied one on the way back. I'm keen to get to the bottom of this. Well, in that case, I shall stay and begin looking into the, another matter, as I promised Kryle. We need not all attend. Something about making cookies. I don't know. Some more of that terrible Charlayan bread. Very well. I suggest the rest of us make our way to Alamigo forthwith, and the sooner we leave, the more time we have to speak with Uriange before the meeting. Oh, you're just trying to tax me with the teleport fines, aren't you? Go to Mordona. Go to Alamigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is teleport. Pay the... You're not from around here. Can you imagine what <laughs> what call you'd have to chat with me? Well, by all means, if you got something, ask away. What are you looking at? No. I want to know what you're looking at. And there's what some of the uh, Garleans call 
on means foreigner or some such. I, I can't even place your accent. Also, what are you looking at? Oh, I'm assuming the flag, since it's actually flying the Alamegan banner. Really? We got the behemoth this time? It's got the weirdest, like, non-flying animation. It just runs. Well, you chill in the back. This is one of those things that it's like, I get that they wanted to give a lot more of the, the less of the walking only. I, think, I don't even know if there are any just walking only um, mounts anymore. But some of them just <laughs> weirdest choices in terms of animation. My friends. Oh, and sorry, forgot my voice for him. My friends, much and more have I heard of your travails in our absence. Heartened am I see to see all hail and whole. As, uh, as uh, we are to see you uh, safely return from your uh, mission, uh, Arianje. I trust uh, Thamecrit made you feel welcome. Well, if it isn't Alphanode and his merry band. Oh. Hi. Arnvald, what are you doing here? When we spoke via Link Pearl, you told me you were away on a mission. And who say this isn't part of it? But, but enough about that. It's good to see you looking so... similar. Thought you would have grown a bit taller after the whole year in another world, but apparently not. Well, I am sorry to, dis to disappoint you. While my soul may be a year older, my body has hardly aged. As you are well aware. And as I remind you that we Elizin are known to be late bloomers. Especially in terms of our height. Mark my words, the day will come when even great aurochs such as yourself will crane your neck to meet my eye. Yeah, that's not going to happen ever, is it? I it was not until my 20th summer that I myself outgrew my boyish proportions. Though Moonbreeder towered over me nonetheless. Harnvold brings the best out of Alpha Node, doesn't he? They both seem so at ease in each other's company. It's almost endearing. So what brings you here exactly? Oh, for Dola, mostly. We need to go over a few things before we set out. Set set out. Wait, does this have something to do with the towers? Eh? What gave you that impression? Actually, tell me later. I've got a meeting to go to. I'll see you afterwards, alright? Your armor's only like level 30! If Fordola is going with him, that must mean... <gasps> no. My dear Arnvald. <laughs> Apologies. As Arnvald ready to point out, we have a meeting to attend. Let's be about it. Again, I would like to offer my gratitude to Masters Thancred and Urianger. There's no small feat to infiltrate the Imperial capital and live to tell the tale, much less in times of civil war. Thanks to them, we may plot our course in full knowledge of how the winds blow in Garlemal. East! Full glad are we to have been of service. But, verily, such dangers as we did encounter pale into insignificance next to those faced by our comrades. An Asian, armed with the might of Bahamut, 
bent on bringing about the final days. Well, if it's anything like this franchise, the final days will have like he sought only to make a show 14 sequels. Disposal. But since then we have seen no sign of this fun Daniel or his worm. And while we've done what we can to bolster our defenses, there's no telling where he might strike next. My guess is the cafeteria. Whenever and wherever it may be, we must use the intervening time to learn more of our enemy. Twas with this in mind that we dispatched scouts to investigate the towers. Are we really sure the towers are related? I mean, they probably are, but... Our advance party took longer than expected to return. And when they did, they tried to kill us. Oh. Luckily, I'd seen that sort of thing before, and we were able to restrain them before they did any harm. Then it was just a matter of letting the Porksies do their work. Oh. Are you saying they were tempered? Well, I mean, they did seem quite angry, but, uh... Once they <laughs> <back to laughs> their senses, they told us everything they could. It seems that just as they were getting close to the tower, they heard an ear-splitting roar. And that was the last thing they remembered. But what worries me most is what they were saying right before they attacked. Glory be to Garlemont. The Tempered have heretofore ever been thralls to primal entities. Yet these hapless souls were compelled to accept a nation as the object of their devotion. This calleth into question all that we know of the condition. Well, not really. I mean, a primal is just belief plus crystal. There is more. Following the Do you believe in a nation? Of missing Amalja, we have learned that other beast tribes have suffered similar losses. And we now have reason to believe that the abductions are connected to the appearance of the towers. Our scouts sighted black-garbed figures leading shackled Hyksor in the direction of the tower in Dravania. Aww. The Temple Knights were able to intercept them before they could reach their destination, liberating the Ixel and apprehending their captors. Each of whom was found to be equipped with Galian arms and armor. Underneath robes. So Why? the Empire is the common threat. With the support of Xenos, it seems likely that Van Daniel has rallied a faction of the splintered Galian army to the banner of the Tolopheroi. Lord Hien reached the same conclusion when I shared our findings with Doma. The plan had been to march on Garlemald from the east and west in order to force a peace treaty. But the situation has changed. Dealing with the threat of the towers must come first. Do they have towers in Doma? Or is it just purely an Eorzea thing? Given the nature of the enemy and the proven risk of tempering, I could think of few suitable candidates to aid in this task. But I am confident in my choice. I present the Blue Mages Guild. Oh, Fordola does not look happy to be there. Resistant to primal influence as they are. They can investigate the towers without fear of being turned. That's actually a very good point. We are glad to put our gifts to use, Commander. <clears throat> yeah, she looks so glad. Gifted or not, going behind enemy lines remains a perilous undertaking. But we must know more if we're to strike back at our foe. I'm counting. If it would give us the upper hand, I'd do it a hundred times over. We won't let you down. 
That concludes the briefing. You two, make ready and join your escort. Poor Alpha, no. Are you certain about this, Aaron Bolt? I am. Come on, let's talk outside. The fact that I cannot remember what exactly these two are really to each other does not help the the suggestive nature of this exchange. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, Fordola, how you doing? If it's small talk you're after, look elsewhere. Okay! I accept that numbers can prove a hindrance when infiltrating down. Why do we said two? Now that that's out in the open, I don't have to keep it under a proverbial hat anymore. So you know, I've already gone through all the formalities at the Rising Stones. Made sure to inform Jamal Varimvmar at Ralga's Reach as well. Arunvold, I admire your enthusiasm. But this is far more dangerous than anything you have done before. I know the risks. And I also know what's in store if we don't stop Fan Daniel from carrying out his plan. With this power of mine, I can make a difference. If I stood idly by, I would regret it for the rest of my life. If I do do this, I can... <laughs> is this what you want? Oh, she doesn't get a choice. What are you asking me for? It's not like I have any say in the matter. Exactly! <laughs> Don't pretend. We both know Commander Aldin gave you a chance to refuse. And you didn't. <clears throat> Aw, she's a soon so finished, is it? But that's what they're all saying. Great and glorious Garlemald slit its own throat. Oh, pretty much, pretty much. And now, from out of its twitching carcass, crawls the Telophoroi with bloody Xenos at its head. I fought for Garlemald, killed for Garlemald. What was I part of? Very well. If your hearts are set on this, I shall not stand in your way. Pound it. <gasps> A fist? A bro fist? Oh! oh. Iron Bolt! <laughs> if you finish with your touching display of camaraderie, I have a question. Which tower are you planning to investigate, exactly? The one that's just outside. Well, the one in Girabani is said to be tightly guarded. It's patrol after patrol out there, apparently. We'd be spotted before we got anywhere near it. Which is why we've set our sights on the one in Pagulthan instead. There shouldn't be anything like as many Imperials to worry about down there. That's great. Where's Pagulthan? Even so. I doubt the local Amalja will look kindly on it if they catch you sneaking around in their territory. Fordola and I had a chance to learn the lie of the land in our previous forays there. We might still find trouble, but at least we won't lose our way.
I'm assuming Paglathan is the region well, that is south is of both. Any um, Mayhap when all uh, of this Thanalan is and Girabanya. Because if you go I into like... You know I've become a rather capable swimmer since our last visit. Oh really? Since you went treasure hunting? Ha! I'll believe that when I see it. Though, to be fair, getting into deep water does seem to be a scion's lot in life. Take care, Ray. Yeah, because if you go to Southern Thanaland, there's a tower you can see to the south east. So I'm assuming that's Paglathon. Should make sense with the Amalja. It means a lot, you know. You coming with me. I'll still owe you for saving my skin, don't I? Can't return the favor if I'm not there. You know, his upbeat attitude I just screams he's going to get killed. Long. That Van Daniel sounds like a tricky customer. Too much for the likes of me, anyway. But we both know I'd just be another soldier if it weren't for my gift. And I need to be a damn sight more than that, given what's coming. I realize I can't hold a candle to a hero like the Warrior of Light or Alfino, for that matter. He might look like he's 12, but he's seen more action than most people see in a lifetime. No, the fact is I'm nothing like them, and maybe I never will be. But I'll be damned if I don't try. They're counting on me. On us. So let's give it our all. Bye bye. He does not want for conviction, but that much is certain. So let us have faith in him. Him and Fordola both. Well, we all had faith in While him. You were the one making towers, a fuss. I would attend to another task. Chasing down this lunar Bahamut. So Tataru can do anything except work a link pearl? <laughs> There's a dragon? I must kill it. Kill the dragon! Even if we set out this instant, he may already have left by the time we arrive. Have her send the Bonanza to Ishgard. It may prove useful should we need to give chase. Gladly. I'll see to it as soon as Krile and I get back to the Rising Stone. Good luck. Where are you? While you go off on your dragoon hunt, Urianje and I will return to headquarters. We have much to tell the others. I wish you every success in your search for our elusive friend. May we all meet again ere long. So now we're kicking off the plot proper. Here be dragons. So Astinian was bound for Ishgard. Whatever it is that brings him home, it's a dragon! We must hope it will keep him there long enough for us to find him. Come, there's no time to lose. What am I doing? I'm just going to teleport.
Yeah, I don't have a, uh, a ton of faith that uh, Arnvald's going to live through this. It just something about his upbeat attitude and the way he's talking just makes me feel like that's a, that's a story beat that is not going to end well for him. All present? Good. Now let's sit up. <laughs> All present? Good. Let's split up. <laughs> Since we're relatively new to this place, Graha and I will look around the open spaces, the, square, the squares and the markets and whatnot. You and Rykirian can delve into the nooks and crannies. Oh, very well. We'll reconvene the airship la landing later, with or without Estinian. Good luck. In, how much time do we have? Is it, we'll meet up at, like... I don't know. I think we should begin to the Sky Steel Manufactory. So, have, so perhaps we, you could try. Oh, he's going to start at the Sky Steel Manufactory. I should try the Congregation. Lucia, maybe. <laughs> Lucia or Lucia? I don't remember exactly how you pronounce her name. Uh, may well have heard of our friend's return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go talk to the government. Is your job just to stand out there and hold that shield? Like, you don't have a weapon. Are you just like a road sign? Must be an awful job. Hey, Lucia. Good evening to you, Warrior of Light. Lord Emmerich said word that you would be my attending the meeting in Alamigo, so I gathered you have not come in search of him. To what do we then owe the pleasure? Ah, I see. No, we are not aware of Sir Anistinian's had returned to Ishgard. But as you remember, he is wont to come and go as he pleases. Annoyingly so. Mayhaps he is seeking an audience with Lord Emmerich, only to find him absent? In any event, I am afraid I cannot help you. Perhaps one of your companions has fared better. Probably not? Taoist Mughal. Where do you get that? I like it. At least it looks so cold. It's the Bonanza! No sign of him. Not that I've ever met him before, but the way Alphano goes on about him, I'm fairly sure I could pick him out in a crowd. He has a big stick. Speaking of which, it does seem awfully quiet. If the erstwhile azure also a lance general excitement first the science coin keeper and now you I'm beginning to think these meetings are more than mere coincidence and I'm beginning to think you came all the way back here just for your armor not that I'm complaining it's been too long. Too long? You look an ilm taller and twice as rugged. It suits you, Alphano. <laughs> Uh-oh. She's gonna Quiet. kick his ass. Have you been giving him lessons on how to be the strong, silent type? Oh no. I am not Alphano! If 
If the two of you are such firm friends, perhaps you should remember what he looks like. And what do you mean, rugged? <laughs> oh, as my brother mentioned what an oaf you are, I'd never have bothered looking for you in the first place. <laughs> Justinian <laughs> Wormblood, the Azure Dragoon, he who fought and felled the Dread Worm Nidhogg at the Warrior of Light's side. Oh, he's fanboying again. <laughs> to think the day would come <laughs> when I should see this living legend with my own eyes. Would someone mind explaining what is going on? <laughs> I would, <laughs> but this is too funny. <laughs> It's been too long. <laughs> that was great. Then <laughs> she's still ticked. No, no, it's quite understandable. That was hardly the first time we've been confused for one another. Nor, I suspect, will it be the last. <laughs> well, I, for one, will not be making that mistake again. What I will say, for the second time today, is that you've grown, inside and out. I can tell. Oh. One can't remain a spoiled little lordling forever, you know. At least someone's having a good time. <laughs> you know when we were growing up? Alphano would never befriend other boys because he couldn't stand the thought of not being in charge. But maybe that's changed. He seems just as happy around Astinian as he does Arenval. Perhaps he sees them as the brothers he never had. I think he's learned how to talk with people rather than at them. Well, you can't keep them all to yourself forever. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him to my. You're joking, aren't you? I'd be glad if someone would take him off my hands. <laughs> no rest for the righteous, eh? Speaking of which, I was just on my way to borrow an airship to take me to Azisla. Okay, why? Azisla? How could I forget? The dragon with whom Bahamut shared the deepest of bonds. Jeff! Aye, Tiamat, his mate. Even now she remains imprisoned on Azisla, though her remorse binds her faster than any shackle. Yeah, she was not. I see. As the one who first summoned Bahamut, you believe she may be able to shine some light on his latest incarnation. Might I suggest that we make the journey to Azisla together? I'm not sure if Tatari mentioned this, but we Scions have an airship of our own now. I see no reason why not. Assuming your sister can bear the thought of sharing the deck with me. <laughs> well, she'll deck you. <laughs> Be my guest, but confuse me with Alphano again and I'll throw you overboard. I don't know who he thinks he is, but he's nothing like Alphano painted him to be. I will admit, he is not exactly as I imagined him either. Based on what I had read of the man, I think I was expecting someone a little less... blunt? Ah, because of the lance. <laughs> or <laughs> my character's just sitting there just going, Nope, oh, he's always been an asshole. I knew him back when I was just, before I even came to Ishgard, when I was just a wee dragoon back in the day. Well, that was quick. It's been quite some time since I set foot on Oz's Law, but I understand the three of you were here rather re more recently. I don't suppose you chanced to meet Tiamat during your visit? No, we were in the Beta Quadrant. Alas not, 
We have no cause to set forth in the, in the Delta Quadrant, but I have uh, studied the relevant records, which to say appreciate a first-hand account of your dealings with her. Well then, Brykirin is the person to ask. As far as I know, he's the only one who's ever actually met Tiamat face to face. Yeah. Yeah. His mid card Sormer helped me, really. I mean, was... Oh, yes, you were the friends of her father! <laughs> yeah. I too have met with Tiamat. After the Dragon Song War came to a close, I came here to speak with her, a worm who had fought her against her own, her own war against man. I wished to know that if she still harbored thoughts of vengeance, and as to as much, she said no. My hatred for your kind was extinguished long ago, but the guilt she felt for resurrecting Bahamut was, was burns on undimmed. It torments her. I see, then your original reason for coming here was the concern that Tiamat had been forced to summon Bahamut. Nidhogg is a part of me. I feel his emotions as my own, and I know that he would not allow his sister to be made a tool of evil. In his absence, it falls to me to watch over her. Money. Stinian is ready to lead the way to Tiamat. I know the way to Tiamat. We all can see the way to Tiamat. She's right there. <laughs> Up. My sire's mortal companion, what bringeth thee back to the forsaken place, child of man? <laughs> it's plain she knows naught of recent events. Perhaps you should enlighten her. Your boyfriend's back, and he's gonna be angry. Ooh ah, ooh ah, your boyfriend's back. Ah, uh, that my sins should be repeated. I sense the faintest stirring. As to who who have called him forth, I know of none drag save the dragons of Murs, our children. As to a who, yeah, they don't know. The icon claimed their souls when he fir when first he manifested. And robbed of their will, they became tool of the Allegan's dark designs. I've seen it with my own eyes. Captives of a lost empire, neither alive nor dead, existing only to preserve Bahamut's corporeal form. Oh yeah, we did bump into some of them in the binding coil. Yes, the dragons of Maricidia are at the mercy of this Asian. There can be no other explanation. Accursed Asians, vile minions of darkness. I 
again you would profane the memory of my beloved and strip our children of their freedom, their dignity, and there will be no depths to which you will not stoop. I wonder if Alice has that line if, if you haven't done the binding coils. Your children's pain means nothing to them. They laugh at your kind suffering. But tears will not right this wrong, nor will lamentation see the perpetrators punished. Uh, Stanian, you're getting a bit nidhoggy on me. What would you have asked me <laughs> ask, have of me, Slayer of Dragons? Behavior befitting a great worm. We came here to ask mighty Tiamat of the first brood. Consort of Bahamut, mother of the dragons of Maracidia, what she intends to do about the crimes committed against her children. Were I free, I would answer thine insolence with fire, but words will have to suffice. Recall, mortals, that it was I who did the first summit of my beloved, praying with all my being to bring him forth. You contend with icons cannot be ignorant of... You oh. too were exposed to his influence. That you are yet in possession of your own will is testament to the indomitable strength of your soul. This is but true. Were you to meet with Bahamut again, you fear you might succumb. Indeed, ask the Dragon Slayer, and he will tell you the power that we of the First Brood wield. Were I to lose myself in the Icon's influence, all would pay the price. Eh, that's a good point. But it is of little matter, for even if I have the strength to resist, yet I lack the strength to break my shackles. This prison shall be my tomb. On the matter of Bahamut's influence, at least, I believe we can be of some assistance. If you're afraid of being enthralled, don't be. We have a cure. And while we've never tried it on one such as you, its basic principles are universal. Seriously? There is no future for those bound to the past. That you committed a terrible sin, I do not dispute. But if you feel remorse, you may yet make amends. We offer you that chance. Take it, or you will forever remain a prisoner. Not of these cruel shackles, but of your own guilt. What are you two doing? We didn't talk about this. This wasn't on the approved itinerary. When our own star faced annihilation, Heidelin granted us sanctuary, and now our foes bring about our own destruction. This I cannot allow. The debt I owe to Heidelin is to all who have suffered for my sins. I will fight with you, children of man. Yeah, I love the fact that it's like uh, it's a weird thing that's bedded in the, the obscured by the language a lot of the times. But the fact that the dragons are essentially aliens <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV.
They came from a different planet, and their planet got destroyed. And so they, uh... While the Porxies have uh, been shown to be effective in curing the tempered, Tiamat would be considered a special case. Oh, I skipped that one accidentally. Then, before going ahead, we should learn as much as we can about the exact nature of her condition. Do you suppose we should find that information here? Why, well, I, I ask. I, uh, we can. Uh, we can indeed. The Allegans kept detailed record on all their notable captives, and I know exactly where to look. In the Warring Triad! We shall leave that to you, then, in the meantime. The rest of us can turn our thoughts to the removal of those shackles. I know Elf, you know, to invite Kyrian here well enough, but not you. Are you certain you're ready to see this through? Rest assured, sir, Sinian, I am both ready and willing to give my all for the sake of the star, not just the reason for wanting to set Tiamat free. While I do not claim to know all of her sorrows, I too once found myself in a prison of uh, despair, and I understand how hard it can be to dare to dream of escape. Uh, it took the encouragement of a braver souls than I to uh, make me the first step forward to a brighter future, and now I would uh, help Tiamat do the same. I gather you are not as young as you look. Mayhap, uh, when our work here is done, we could trade tales over a pot of Tataru's famous tea. And be indebted to her for the leaves in hot water? I think not! Uh, I see. <laughs> uh, returning swiftly to tasks at hand, then. I believe the nodes of Tiamat's restraints are located in the sector known as the Flagship. Ah, uh, yes, we are familiar with it. The Aetherochemical Aether Research Facility. Uh, you may wish to take this. A spirit vessel containing a small amount of my blood. How many of these do you have hanging around? Would you just happen to be carrying around with you? I suppose it seemed really odd but to explain. Rambrose, Uriandre, and I were researching to make use of spirit vegetables and transference, not only memories, but to the traits of certain bloodlines. So I near say I always have one around for opportunities to test the theory. As for its use to you, I may call the previous visit. The nodes have granted access to the functions, and having identified me as being of royal blood, armed with that spear vessel, I pause it will do the same for you. Even in the absence of the rest of me. It seemed worth a try, at least. Agreed. We'll take good care of it. To the flagship, then. Thunder. Nope, no thunder. Oh, we got creepy nightmare horsey this time. Who has like the least intimidating music to go along with him? Oh, there's the lightning. Okay. I should probably start going up to get <laughs> don't think it's going to be at the bottom of the flagship although I kind of wonder if they ever were going to do something with the lower levels of the flagship They go. Let's split up and search for the flagship on the nodes. Controlled Tiamat's restraints. But no, you should. But should you find a likely candidate, do not be tempted at make any adjustments. It would not do to accidentally release some manner of experimental monstrosity. No less Tiamat herself in her current state. Our objective is to stage this simply to identify the irrelevant node or nodes 
Once we have learned what we can, we will reconvene and compare notes prior to proceeding. Gotcha. Maybe it's over at the spiky ball. Yes. Spiky balls usually have good answers. Die. I was actually perusing around on Twitter today and I saw someone mention the fact that, uh, that was probably from a while ago, but that Square Enix is so ashamed of Final Fantasy XIII that there is no reference to it whatsoever in Final Fantasy XIV, which is, I found to be a hilarious comment considering how much Allegan stuff is actually just reskinned models from XIII. Friction between metallic components detected. Temperature increasing to critical levels. Please replace the damaged parts from retreat to safe distance. Boo. Uh, no. Blip bloop. Warning, scheduled dragon restraint maintenance due in negative 2,020 years. Failure to verify system integrity may result in unscheduled specimen release. Ah, that one might have something to do with what we're looking for. Just a hunch. Stinian, are you arguing with the ball? Those nodes... Whatever you call them, why do they quiver so? Be nice to the balls. Elephant! Her data link with Delta Quadrant broken. Possible cause, intruder interference. Advise deployment of automated combat units. Proceed? No, don't proceed. Yeah, like that. That thing's from Final Fantasy XIII. They just gave it a different texture, but the model is 100% from Final Fantasy XIII. So like, Final Fantasy XIII stuff is actually all over this game. <laughs> if you know where to look. I am afraid Estinian and I will have little to show for our efforts. Did you find anything? <laughs> I did! A node that smelled like burnt hair! I found a way with... Yes, I found the little one that makes the right noise. I don't want to... I don't want to say the wrong thing and have to fight something. Spontaneously, you say? Well, that sounds promising. Almost suspiciously so, in fact. Then you were in the position of the spirit vessel. Hmm. I dare say, indeed, the node of which Graha spoke. And it was chirruping, you say? Well then, let's go take a closer look. Yeah! Rock out! Flip, do you wish to operate the Dragon Restraint Mechanisms? Flip, Flip, you do not have the requisite access privileges. Operation of the Dragon Restraint Mechanisms are can only be undertaken by the Chief Technologist and members of the Royal Family. Or those with a, v or those with a v vessel full of royal blood, perhaps. No, not that. Beep bloop. Blip. New user detected. Commencing biometric authentication. Bloop. Authentication complete. Identified as member of royal family. Please state your name. 
Uh, me? Welcome, Rykarian Odd. You may operate the Dragon Restraint Mechanism when ready. Bleep bloop error. Unable to disengage restraints of the specimen. Tiamat, a system update is required. <laughs> System update? What do you suppose it's asking us? To smash it. Now that I do understand. You can go first. User agitation detected. Irritating guidance program blue. In order to operate the restraint mechanism, I require a central course central core control system. However, unable to establish a link to said system due to obsolescence of my own software. The issue can be resolved by applying a system update using the corresponding terminal located within the flagship. So can this thing restrain the restraints or not? It can, but only once it receives the requisite system update? Until which it's just float here spewing nonsense? User dissatisfaction not detected. Initiating placation protocols. I am here to help. Rest assured I am on hand to guide you through every step of the process. <laughs> Great. Computers are like that. <laughs> the angrier you get with it, the more it's just like, no, I'll help, I'll help. For vengeance. Guiding user to terminal, please this way. Hey, now I got my mana curve. Ah, the warring triad. Two random wings. Never quite got what that was about. Nope, still below this point. Oh, here we go. Let's see, according to the terminal, central employing software version 56.1.135. Dare I ask which version you are employing? 42002, of course. Warning errors detected in data management system. This made time for update will require five years, one day. That is rather longer than we were hoping. Is there any other options? For instance, using this terminal to operate Tiamat's understaints instead. The proposed method is indeed an option. Please be warned, however, the procedure may be changed as a result of the system update and my instructions are no longer accurate. Well, I can't imagine I've changed all that much. As long as we pay attention to do any discrepancies, we should be able to muddle our way through. Don't bother trying to explain. Just tell me if you've made any progress. I would say so, yes. It does, however, require that I remain here and operate the terminal. I shall inform you via Link Pearl once I am ready to release the shackles. Uh, it might be best if you left the spirit vessel with me, as I, I may have yet for use for it. Rest assured, I will return it to Grahatia when this is all over. Just a little bit more work and Tiamat will be free. But before we go any further, there's something I would know. 
When Tiamat and her kin fought against the Allegan Empire, both sides were dancing to the tune of the Asians. And it was the same on Ishgard, where they stroked the fire of conflict between man and dragon from the shadows. All the Asians tur touch turns to ash, and thus you have made it your mission to fight them. But there will be times where you try to reach out to them instead to find common ground. And I must ask, what do you intend to do with Van Daniel? Will you try and reach out to him too? I will try, yes, and if that fails, I will remember him. Hmm. I see a little point in reasoning with the wretch, or remembering him for that matter. But then perhaps that's the difference between you and me. You see the good in people, even it will be the faintest glimmer. I only hope it does not come to rue your benevolence. You think it unwise for viewing the world thus? Far from it. It has ever been your way. I learned that when we journeyed together with Iceheart. Yet the fact remains there are some who view compassion as a weakness to be exploited, and there will come a time when you extend the hand of friendship only to wish you had felt only to wish you had dealt the killing blow. So save your mercy for those who deserve it. Yeah, allow me to tell you about the crazy people we met in Yonshai. Well then we should get back to the task. Alpha Node, you have it from here. This mount always puts a smile on my face. I like the lightning aether crystals that like curl. Gone. I always had so many unnecessary bits and bobs on everything. It's always so weird. Hey, Tiamat, we found a way to break you free! Estinian told me all is well, but nothing more. Honestly, it's like getting the blood out of stone with him. I take it Alfie knows abstinence is that he's needed elsewhere? He dead. Oh, well that sounds rather frustrating. <laughs> but you got there in the end. Well, you could <laughs> talk off talking to notes. Graha and I were learning as much as he could about Tiamat's condition. Our readings confirm that her uh, ethereal balance leans strongly towards the umbral, as was the case with the kobolds. Uh, therefore, the things being equal, the treatment should... The difficulty lies in the sheer quantity of ether in which we must contend. Multiple applications of the treatment will inevitably be required if we are to reverse the effects of the tempering completely. Meaning, I'll need to get all the ether I can get. Thank you in advance. Although this endeavor will ask much of us, we do have one reason to be optimistic. Namely, that Tiamat shows no signs of fanatical devotion. To just a milder case of tempering than many who have suffered by the kobolds. Mm, Tiamat saw Bahamut as an equal rather than a god. Might have something to do with it. Now that you mention it, it very well might. She would not have believed it necessary to defer to his will. But enough talk. It's time to put our theories to the proof. Elfinode, to disengage. Tell Elfinode to disengage the ethereal dampeners. I don't know what that is. I'm counting on you, Angelo! Oink. Ah, uh, such warmth. The frost that's shadowed with my soul begin to thaw, but what are these 
Visions of days long forgotten, wars of men in Malag. Where do such memories come from? Could it be the process of restoring her soul to the pre Shepherd state is awakening ancient memories? Or may the opposite be true? If so, by helping her recall the past, we might be able to speed her recovery? Rakirian, she trusts you. Speak to her and then put. Tell me of Bahamut. Ah, Bahamut, my beloved. Would that peace we found in Mericidia would have could have lasted for eternity. But alas, it was not to be. The Asians sought to that. In all creation I know none more wicked. It was at their behest that the men of Alag first came to Mericidia unto our homes. The tale began when Bahamut and I flew to our father's side. We took wing in search of a place to make our airy. Beyond the southern ocean, we discovered a lush and fertile land that had become known as Mericidia by the children of men, though many were years passed before they crossed the seas. Upon our arrival, we were welcomed by the peaceful people of the forest, kin to the trees, Surrounded by nature's bounty, Bahamut and I had found a place to raise our young. Fascinating. This correlates with the writings of the Charlian scholar Rurusha. She posits that man first settled on the southern continent towards the end of the second astral area correctly, as it would appear, as she only with us to hear the tale of Tiamat herself. Yep. And again, Angelo. I want to know about the children of the trees that she, you know, also lived in Maricidia. Was it the Fiera? When first the children of the man, of man arrived on our shores, no foot did they set in those places which we held dominion. Such was the fear of dragon kind, and as they kept their distance, so did we let them be. Yet days went by and by after ships appeared around the horizon bearing ever more of the brethren who divided the vast land amongst themselves for a time they knew peace and prosperity but as their numbers grew the smaller their share came to be seen and soon they began to covet the territory of their fellows ere long man fought man blood was answered with blood and none could see the end of the strife till one day they came to us Recognizing our wisdom, they entreated us to intercede in the conflicts. Bahamut agreed, and with <laughs> and with him presiding over the affairs of men, the land knew peace once more. So he became the judge. Alas, those golden days of harmony too were fated to end, for the men of Al Alag slew my beloved, and I, in my rage and sorrow, heeded the envenomed words of an Asian. The rest thou knowest too well. But your tale doesn't have to end there. When you are free, we'll rid the world of the Asians together. And you and your beloved will have justice. Fine sentiments, but you're almost spent. I'll keep watch from above. If the treatment fails, run. Ugh, thanks for the vote of confidence. I swear when all this is over. Keep going, Alice. Uh, keep going, Alice. Uh, the magic is working. Huff. <laughs> well, I knew this wasn't going to be easy. No patient could have prepared me for treating a great worm. We're close. I can feel it. You know, I've got a few more drops of ether left to give. With yours and Graha's, this this will work. And I believe you speak for both of us when I say take as much as you require. 
Careful, I might hold you to that. All right. Here we go. What was that noise? Yes, I feel it. The icon's grip groweth weak. Did it work? We won't know for certain until the shackles are removed. Well, that doesn't sound like a good plan at all. Is this gun loaded? I don't know. We won't try until we put it up to our temple and pull the trigger. Answer me this, child of man. Can my kindred be saved like in like manner? Many have been subjected to the Allegan's dark arts. Their flesh irrevocably altered. For such tortured souls, I fear there can be no salvation. My children. Should you hearken unto my call, we will fly together once more. But should you not, I will grant you peace. Better to die than live as a tool of evil. You too would wish this, I know. I shall do as I must. Dang! When that time comes, you won't be alone. We'll stand by you. Earth. Thou hast my gratitude, little one. Alpha knows ready. It's time. Time for what? Let's hope the treatment worked as it should. We're all dead. The end. I wasn't expecting it down that way, but you know. Bahamut, my beloved. For vengeance, for atonement, I rise. been a while since we've seen a great worm that wasn't trying to kill us. Orionje, your timing could not be
can't be better. <laughs> we have a dragon coming. Understood, we're on our way. Everyone's dead. Been sighted over Pagelthan. He flies with the largest amount of settlements in the region, at the head of a vast host, including dragons. Aww. Did you hear all that, Alphano? You'd best rejoin your comrades. I'll make my own way. Because I can just do that. Remember that time you guys were getting into trouble in Kirabanya, and I just showed up out of nowhere? Yeah, I'm that good. I'm a Stinian worm blood. Not to be confused with the Highwind family, which are even better. Oh, no fair. I want to ride. I'm sure you're desperate to join Estinian and Tiamat in battle. It would be wiser to gather the full strength of the Scions at first. The foe we face demands no less. The Flames of War. I have already sent word to the others. Oh, wait, no, I'm doing the I'm doing Ariange's voice. What am I doing? I have I have sent word to the uh, others. Uh, we are uh, to rendezvous at Ulda in the Hall of Full Flame. Let us collect the Alpha No and be on our way. true this is but apparently i've heard at least a few people mention the fact that they have been able to quote unquote soft lock themselves out of the sightseeing log by freeing tiamat like that are you just teleporting us to the whole flames oh awesome Now I know some of you could go and do with a rest, but I'm sorry to say the Telefo Teleforo Tel have some other plans. Pagelthon is already under siege. Happily, the immortal flames have just in arrived just in time to join the defensive effort with Marshal Taropin at its hell hell. Well now, given the failure of the peace negotiations, I wonder was certain how the Sultanate would respond. It is good to hear that Uldar has not abandoned the Amalja. Abandoned them? Did we not profess to be our fr to be their friends? Oh, sorry. To abandon them? Did we not profess to be their friends? Ah, oh, it's Papashan! Your Grace, Marshal Tarapin made provisions for such an exig exigency and was ready to depart at a moment's notice. All that was required was the agreement of the Syndicate, each of whom favor fa voted in favor of the intervention. Nor is Uldar alone in this resolve. The other Alliance nations have likewise dispatched troops to Paglathan. Yet even with our combined strength, we shall be sorely tested, for we face not only the might of the Imperial Legion, but Lunar Bahamut and his draconic horde besides. T 
Candlewood's children. Fight as we may, victory by no is by no means assured. But not, not, uh, but not all of the omens are grim. Our forces report that despite the proximity to Luna Bahamut, none of the Amalja have shown signs of tempering. Strange, but Primal would turn down a chance to claim new thralls. Unless it is incapable of doing so. Primals are not wont to serve a master, Asian or otherwise. It may well be that Lunar Bahamut differs in some fundamental matter the manner than those we have previously encountered. If that were true, anyone could fight him. And Vercarian and the others like him would be able to shoulder the would uh, wouldn't have to shoulder the burden alone. Be that as may, Lunar Bahamut remains an uncalculable powerful foe with whom our soldiers are struggling as best. And through through mere force of arms, with the aid of the science, however, I believe we could fare much better, assuming that is if you're ready to take the field. An airship awaits to bear you to the front. Pray set forth as soon as you are able. Heck yeah, we're gonna fight. We're gonna win. Riandre, our uh, alpha is very quiet. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, she'll continue to coordinate our forces. Till next we meet, may the Twelve bless you and keep you. It was kind of her to speak with us personally. You may, certain, you may be certain that she has no shortage of other responsibilities. Yeah, but we're the ones putting our necks on the line. Well, I'm for one, I'm inclined to do as her grace requests, lest we forget. Arinvald and Fordola are in Poglathon on reconnaissance. The sooner we save the day, the better their chances. Indeed, to the airship then! Go to the airship landing. Ah, Ulda. My home away from home. Actually, my home away from home is in the lavender beds, but... You know what I mean. Actually, no, that just is my home. What am I talking about? So this would be my home away from home. Greetings, we've been expecting you. But say the word and we'll depart for Paglathon. Paglathon now accessible. Alright. Where are we dropping? No. I stand ever ready. Yeah, that's a good team. Ooh, I like this music.
I mean, it just does look like we're just in Southern Thalamon, so... I guess I was right about that gas. actually the final dungeon for the, uh, the expansion too. shooting the dragon. <laughs> One thing I wish there was clear indication of and trust is like what everyone else is attacking. Because if you don't attack the same thing, I know I say this every time I go through one of these things on the stream, they invariably will take twice as long to get through the dungeon. be the girl of all. Yeah, I'm going to call it now. I'm going to make a prediction while we're running through this. Um, Arnvald is going to die. He is going to do so... Oh, it's the cold. Um, they're going to do so by sacrificing himself to save Fordola. Thus giving you know, a, a guilt complex to Fordola as like the one person who actually believed in her. And, like, had her back. Uh died to make sure she had a chance to redeem herself. Don't you dare try and fire breath me. You want a fire breath? This is totally efficient, but I'll show you how to do it. There. Same animation. So mine lasts a lot longer. I have better fire breath than he does.
Hey, dragons! Leave that kobold alone! These are very large poles. I didn't realize there was one more guy back here. <laughs> That's a dragon? It's more like a curl thingy. Lightning to the lightning rod. Ow. Okay, don't stay at the lightning rod. Ow. Oh, Trixie, Trixie! You actually had something in mind for that. A little slow I'm getting out of that one.
Oof. Like there's a lot of damage going around. On the plus side, it's fairly short. It doesn't have a ton of health. I mean, at least compared to a lot of the other bosses in uh, Shadowbringers. Hey, a box. What took you so long? The amount are in trouble. Let's split up. Okay, where do you want me to go? Oh! I could have told those guys were on our side, or... I mean, I, I saw the Imperial Magitek, but... You know, we've been known to use that before. There's two more guys back there. Oh, now we're attacking the Magitek Karma. Always nice to see uh, Ishgar here to hand hand to hand. As we're closing out, I'm actually very curious where all of this is actually going. Like, I know Endwalkers is Endwalker is supposed to bring about like you know like oh they're bringing recreating the final days and all that stuff. But it's it's really kind of I'm kind of curious like what all this stuff like the lunar Bahamut. And the towers. Oh no, you don't. Oh, thanks, Astinia. 
uh, all are gonna how they're gonna tie into this entire thing. I mean, I get the big the big theme so far in these last few like setup chapters have really been. Is there something back there? Just realized I haven't really been looking for treasure chests at all. Um, trying to unite all of Eorzea under like a single group settle all of everyone's individual disputes with each other type of thing you know you had the beast tribe settled in the last in 4. Point, in 5.4 you had the beast tribes. And then in this one you're dealing with like working with the dragons. That was a bad idea. I should have stayed where I was. I would have been fine. Counter, just like the giant war machine thing. It's like nothing really to attack. I love one of these. 505, okay. Okay, let's give this another go here. <laughs>
Yeah, this is the one where it's going to be the pushback. Jeez. Need my workout done. Oh. I go here. Kind of a color. Center of this. I, that is, that is, that is just an incredibly annoying boss fight. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't talking there for a bit. I was just focusing on trying to get the dance. I like how the dragons are called Tello Dragons. They're like part of the Tolophoroi. 
now. Looks like this is literally the end right over here, but I don't see like a final boss or anything. Which makes me wonder what's gonna happen. Oh. <laughs> well, I like the wheat and everything in the fields. This is actually really just pretty. I mean, other than like all the mass death and the fire and everything, but just like the golden fields of wheat. Thanks, Tiamat. Ah! Aha, get in here. That ah, random Cthulhu Bahamut. <laughs> so I know some of you are probably watching this and thinking, hey, those aren't dragons, those are giant turtles. What's the deal there? And the answer actually comes from a very interesting chart you can find in the Encyclopedia Eorzea books. Which essentially details the development path of your average dragon. And essentially is, as they grow, essentially they, you know, imagine each dragon is essentially Eevee from Pokemon? And depending on the conditions and situations, they will grow and develop in to different um, different forms. So, like if um, they 
are more in, a, in, a, in an environment where they need more flight, uh, they'll grow and lose their forelegs and instead sprout wings, which leads into an entire developmental line of them growing up having two wings, two larger wings, and um, two hind legs. Telotherium Therium Luna Brahmat. See, is a Cthulhu. Because he's got all the weird tentacle junk on his head. On the plus side, that Bahamut's way smaller than the one that last time I fought with. All they say? I need you to limit break the hell out of him. you to it. He's doing Akmorn. Jeez. Well, you know, I will say this. At least it is a... Uh, appears to be a bit of a... worthy of being the last one <laughs> for the expansion. It's like every mechanic in the books here. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Okay. I, I, I see what I did wrong. That was my bad. I'll, I'll admit to that. You think your teleporter could have at least dropped me past the dragon flight section? Oh, there's a treasure coffer over here. I guess that's a good thing. So this is an example of like what you would develop a dragon that would develop into that specializes in flight. And the reason there's turtles is because if they're based more on ground and need something like to repel threats, 
they would develop harder shells and things like that and defensive. Alright, let's try this one more time. I'm sorry to get the handle on this one. barely made it. I, I, it took me a second to realize that there wasn't one in the middle. <laughs> and now we're getting Giga Flare. Still not as powerful as Donald Duck, but... because no one else can do it. Well, I did that by the seat of my pants. This one is in the middle. Don't stand under that.
Yep, I knew she was gonna do that. Take care of it. Thank you, LSA. Hey, and I got a challenge log done. Now well, don't really do anything, some next level, but you know. I'll take it. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we killed Lunar Bahamut. But the real question is, did we get a trading card? I don't think so. Yay, more, um... Dragoon gear. How appropriate. I don't think I got anything out of that entire thing that I can use with this class. Let's... Job. Whatever. Children of man, the shade of my beloved is no more, and I shall be forever in your debt. By your deeds we are set free, and free we shall remain, as long as I draw breath. Never again will the dragons of Mericidia hearken to the lies of Asians. This I vow. I had a hunch it was going to be an anomaly. Long have our peoples waged war, but no more. Yay! Your fallen lie beside our own. By our words and deeds shall we honor their sacrifice. our friend and you have proven yourselves worthy of our trust it is the guardians who are deserving of our fury well yeah i shall see that my brethren learn the truth of this day and rally as many as possible to the cause till we meet again. And thus did we make allies of the Amalja. Yeah. This is just something we do. It would certainly seem that way. The Sultana will be pleased. Let's go and give her the good news, shall we? Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Close. Oh, crap. Why is it gooey? What in Ralga's name happened here? And why is it gooey? The gods only know. But you can bet these poor sods aren't here by choice. Quickly! We've got to get them free! No. 
have I done? It's too late for them. We're leaving now. Oh yeah, this is exactly what they did with the binding coil. I called it. <laughs> While it would be too much to hope that we'd seen the last of Fan Daniel, we hope to have dealt his schemes a telling blow this day, and allow that to call <laughs> and that alone is cause to celebrate. And celebrate I will when you receive word of Erinvald's safe return. <laughs> yeah, I know I could do it on trust. When the dust settles. Standing around here worrying isn't going to help matters. Come, let's discuss the day's events with Pippin and her grace. Brave scions! Oh. Would I come to treat you to a hero's welcome, but I bear urgent news from the Fond... Fond... Oh. Place. Your grace, whatever is the matter? As our troops withdrew from Pakthon, they came upon two scouts sent to a nearby tower. I have yet to hear the full account, but it seems one of them, your friend, I believe, has been wounded and was dragged away by the other. Can you tell us aught of uh, Erinvald's condition, Your Grace? The wounded scout? Not save that his grave. The Chirurgins tend to him even as we speak. The infirmary must be inundated with the wounded. If all of us go, we'll be, we'll be get underfoot. Vercurian, Estinian, would you mind going after Alphanode? He may need support from someone other than me. Fine. <laughs> Thank you. The rest of us see the relevant people know what took place in Pagathon. Come on, then. I'm taller than you. Shut up. But I'm still stuck on the gooey people sealed in walls thing. That was honestly very disturbing all of a sudden. Right, where is this place that you want us to go? Oh, okay, it's at the Alchemist Guild. I can work with that. <laughs>
another one come to see the lad in the silver armor? Master Damaliot is currently attending to him as we speak. If you would be so kind to wait. What did Master Telemont said? Tell me his exact words. Shut up, Alphano, and let the nice doctors do their job. But <clears throat> you, you're right. Forgive me. When we last set off as well, it's Ehrenvold. I was afraid that something like this would happen. And now that it has, all I can do is wait. What else is she supposed to do? Dead. We've done what we can. The rest is up to him. May we see him? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do not think that why. You must let him sleep. Thank you for bringing him back. He owes you his life. That's going to make her angry. I just... I just wish I had been there. Perhaps... I don't know. Perhaps I could have... Punch him! Could have what? Got tempted? Don't flatter yourself. You can't save everyone. No one can. Not even the warrior of bloody light. Hey, screw you. I'm right here. People die all the time. For no good reason. And those who take up the sword die quicker than most. If you're going to shed a tear every time a soldier falls on the battlefield, you'd best stay away. It's no place for the weak of heart. It may be that victory cannot be won without cost. I want to know what his hood looks like when he puts it on. Because this looks like a big metal plate with no openings. Where does that go in this whole thing? Does that cover his eyes? Is that just on top here? If so, what is the point? I am deeply fascinated by that fashion choice. But all life is precious. And I refuse to shrug at its loss. It's probably not what I should be thinking at such a dramatic moment. But there it is. Let it never be said that I am not honest. All life is precious! <laughs> to grow up, little man. Before your sparkling ideals get everyone killed. Too late! I already let that happen once. <laughs> You're right. He is idealistic. But the world has more than its fair share of realists, like you and me. It's people like him who dare to dream that things could be better and make it happen against all the odds. Whose names live on forever. The heroes. The battlefield is littered with would be heroes. At this rate, you'll not be next. And what will become of your precious dreams then? They'll be gone. Like dust on the wind.
Meanwhile, I contribute nothing to this conversation. <laughs> I just stand there. I know, I know. There's nothing more I can do here. Come, let's rejoin the others. Ahem. Her grace invites the scions of the seventh dawn to join her in the fragrant chamber. Your comrades have already arrived. Will you three be joining them? We will. I'm taller than you. Shut it. Ah, this is the fragrant room. Your Grace, pray forgive us our lateness. No. But not of that. I understand a close comrade of yours was wounded in the line of duty. Our involved. Yes. You were the one that came and told them that. It was at the Alliance's behest that he risked all, and we are grieved to hear of his condition. Rest assured, he will receive the finest care our chirurgeons can provide. On that, you have my word. Chirurgeon. That's how you pronounce it. Chi, so like Greek letter urgent like surgeon now we will share with you the findings of the mission pippin pray relate to our guests the details of bordoli's account messed up yo there's goo everywhere it gooey and sticky we don't like it First Bahamut, now Ifrit, or Luna Ifrit, as Fan Daniel would doubtless have it. It is now all but certain that the towers were conceived to facilitate the summoning of primals by those imprisoned within. Less yeah. certain is the means by which the Telophoroi constrain the wills of said entities to enact their designs in defiance of the pleas of their victims. Mayhap they do not. If near proximity to the towers is enough to make loyal servants of the Empire's mortal enemies, it stands to reason that the same is true for those held captive. They invoke their gods for the good of Garlemald, and in their disturbed state of mind, summon a primal whose form reflects their own alteration. It all begins to make sense. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the towers bear a striking resemblance to a much larger structure which Uriange and I observed from afar during our visit to the Imperial capital. That means there's more gooey stuff in Garlemald. Ah. Assuming it too is capable of tempering those in its immediate vicinity, it would go some way to explain the swiftness with which the Telophoroi managed to rally so many Imperials to their cause. While the situation in Garlemald is indeed troubling, I fear we have more immediate concerns. Ifrit was not the only primal summoned. At approximately the same time, observers at several other towers bore witness to the emergence of further such entities. Titan and Garuda? character has no reaction to this news in the destructive power of Bahamut and the grand companies are moving to deal with the threat even as we speak though 
we are aware that the task will not be easy, we would call upon the Scions only as a last resort. Pray, conserve your strength for now. After all, it was not so very long ago that you rid us of Bahamut. On which note, I am pleased to report that our talks with the Amalja have reached an agreeable conclusion. They have pledged their full support to our cause. Yay! It is our hope that this historic agreement will encourage other tribes to join us at the negotiating table. And I know that I speak for all of the Allied leaders when I say that we will welcome them with open arms at such time as they do. Of course, this was only made possible by the feats of heroism performed at Pagelfarn. Moreover, we shall not allow the sacrifices of those fallen in battle to have been made in vain. As hope leads to victory, shall victory lead to a new dawn for Eorzea. How many new dawns are we going to have? I assume one a day, but... <laughs> And my heart will be my guiding key. Wait, wrong franchise. Till next we meet, my friends. I bid you safe travels and blessed respite. Click, go back into a cutscene. Right, then. Unless anyone has any objections, I think it's time we return to the Rising Stones. I object. And that includes you, Alpha No. Alrenvald is in good hands here. Though, of course, they would be doubtless to mock me for pacing about the infir infirmary. Let us retire then, uh, that we might regain our strength and readiness for coming challenges. If all are in agreement, oh, if all are in agreement then. Shall let Kral know to expect us. A hot bath and a hearty meal shouldn't be beyond rearranging when the time available. It would be good to be home. I have some thinking to do. Yes, I'll try asking him, and thank you. I shall look forward to it. Our comrades eagerly wait our turn, and Kryl in particular has a few matters which she is keen to discuss. One of which concerns you, Estinian, believe it or not. You will join us, won't you? Fine. Really? I thought you were uh, avoiding the that Baldesian woman, quote unquote. If I refused, she would only pursue me. She always pursues me, Alpha. No. Let's get this over with, shall we? Now we...
And we go into the Rising Stones. Welcome back. I expect you must all be exhausted. Ere you take your rest, however, I would beg a moment of your time. Okay. Thanks to Arnvold's selfless efforts, we may now be confident that we understand the function of the towers. But many questions remain regarding the reason for the summonings and what lurks behind the looming edifice in Garlemald. Spooky. Until such questions are answered, we will struggle to devise an effective strategy for thwarting the Telophoroi's stated aim. Nothing less than the destruction of this star. And so, given the gravity of the situation, I move that we petition the aid of Charlian. <gasps> it is possible the ancient knowledge preserved within their archives may hide a clue to our enemy's methods. But given Charlian's established policy of non-intervention, our former colleagues are not like to aid us in its discovery. Oh, I well remember what they're like. The Forum's bare-faced refusal to assist you in the days prior to the Calamity must rank as Charlian's most shameful act since the Exodus. But were the final days to be reenacted, it would spell doom for us all. Surely even they cannot turn a blind eye to that. Yes, they can. I trust we are all of the same mind on this matter. Urgent as it seemed, I took the liberty of petitioning the Alliance for leave to act as Eorzea's emissary, and have since received their blessing. I presume your role as a student of Valdesian will carry some weight with the Forum? No. One can but hope. If truth be told, our organization has been a shadow of its former self ever since the disappearance of the Isle of Val. But the name does still retain some degree of prestige. I only pray it will be enough. If not, my no coat and cuteness will have to get me through it. At once. But before I do, I should also mention the other matter to which I would devote some time during my stay. After hearing what transpired in the first, I began to question the true nature of Heidelin's blessing. A topic I have discussed at some length with Yishtola. What? We were wondering, when was the last time Heidelin spoke to you directly? Um, Thursday. When you regained her blessing, was it not? But never since, not in all your time in the first, when you faced the unsundered, the very heart of Zodiac. Nah, no. History shows us that Heidelin is able to awaken the echo in her chosen, convey her will directly, and grant the blessing of light. To our knowledge, however, she has not sought to intervene in man's affairs for some considerable time. Might not the explanation for that lie with her choice of champion? Mayhap she is content to trust in his judgment. <laughs> no. <laughs> but following my initial discussion with Kryle, I made inquiries of my own. And as far as I am able to tell, Heidelin has not made her will known to anyone. During my time in the first, the Oracle of Light spoke to me through Reeve. But that was not the will of Heidelin. It was Minfilia herself. Indeed. And while she and Heidelin were inextricably linked, Minfilia yet acted of her own volition. A messenger, yes, but one who spoke with her own voice. I wonder, could Heidelin's silence suggest the presence of some disruptive force, perhaps? Some obstacle to communication? While I share Uriange's high opinion of your conduct, I see no reason why she would deny you her guidance altogether. 
Then again, who am I to say? The fact is, we simply don't know. But if the explanation is to be found anywhere, I can think of worse places to look than the archives of Charlie and their research on the Ethereal Sea in particular. Really? The Ethereal Sea? Resolved though I am to go, believe me when I say that I take no pleasure in the thought of leaving you a member short. Now of all times. Yeah. Estinian, we stand on the eve of a struggle that will decide the fate of this star. One in which we scions may play a telling part, yet we are but few in number. And so I must ask you again, will you join us? No. You see the world the way you want it to be. I see the world the way it is. You are idealistic to a fault. Aww. But I know you would never turn your back on those in need. Never close your eyes to their suffering. And somehow, your deeds lend truth to your words, giving the light to my doubts in so doing. I have seen others draw strength from your belief. In Ishgard, in Alamigo, you inspired them to stand up and fight. To win, no less. And even when you lost those you held dear, you carried their spirit with you and made their memory your guiding light. The burden of so many hopes and dreams would be too heavy for most to bear. Well, except for Moon Brita, we kind of forgot about her entirely. But you bear it willingly. As you have shown me, some dreams are too important to let go. Aww. If you have need of my strength, it's yours. After all you've done, how could I refuse? Like this. No. Thank you, Estinian. Whatever challenges await us, I shall not falter. You have my word. And now, I may bid you farewell. Safe in the knowledge that all is as it should be. In this little corner of the world, at least. You will be sorely missed. Tread warily in Charlian. And do try not to let the Forum embroil you in their politics. A forlorn hope, I know, given the individuals involved. <gasps> I shall do my very best. Farewell. Bye, Kral. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. Is it Goopy? Oh, it's Goopy. Oh no, that's just carpet. Never mind. It's not Goopy. This one meet with your approval? <laughs> Apparently not. Or could it be that you're still upset about the dragons? <laughs> you are unwise to remind me of so costly a failure. Why would he even care about that? Oh, 
hardly at all. Though, admittedly, the chances of us being able to procure any more Merosidian dragons are rather slimmer following Tiamat's reappearance. Yeah. Oh, but the seeds have been sown, my lord. We have only to wait for them to quicken. They're doing... They're balancing the books? Is it safe to assume that you will be ready to control you know what? The hour draws nigh. This nation, forged for Asian ends, will finally prove its worth. <laughs> A mighty empire, now no more than an instrument of this star's destruction. What a pleasure it will be to put it to use. Which brings me back to our earlier topic. My lord, while I appreciate that it is not an easy decision, it really is past time you chose your weapon. There is one that I have been meaning to test. Well, well, not quite what I was expecting, though I will say. It does seem rather apt. Really? Do we get to see it? I mean, I'm considering I've seen the preview stuff for for Endwalker. I've got a good hunch about what it is. Well, looks like I'm going to be busy for a few moons. Not that they ever seem to be doing anything but now. Thancred's got me dispatching troops over every corner of the earth, which is not to say that I don't trust the Alliance, because I do, but when it comes to putting down primals, nobody does it better than us. Well, and you lot, more accurately, you won't catch me trading blows with a primal in the near future, but if I ever fell fiend for you to vanquish, for, for every fell fiend you, earn, you, you vanquish, there's countless meals to arrange, baths to fill, sheets to wash, stores to replenish, and the list just goes on. Which is where I come in, and gladly, mind you, this is the least I can do to support you, the Scions who risk life and limb, like poor Arnvold. Uh, I wish there was something I could do for him, but we'll just have to settle for saying the odd prayer and keeping a roof over our heads. Would it do to have him coming back to complete shambles, would it? That's enough of my rambling. Off you go and get some rest. If there's any developments, I promise you'll be the first to know. And that ends part one of Death Unto Dawn. And with that, I am going to take a little bit of a break. It's, it's just past midnight here, uh, but it's a long weekend, and I plan on getting through this. As far as I can tell, there's three quests left. They're probably pretty sizable, but there's just three of them. And we'll have to see how it goes. But I plan on finishing this tonight. Uh, but first, I need to take a little break, get myself something to drink, and stretch my legs for a bit, because we have been going for just over three hours now. And... <laughs> It's a, uh, it's proven to be a night, and I am having a blast with this, and I want to thank you all right now, uh, before we go into break, thank you all for joining me on this wonderful evening. Um, that said, uh, we'll get into intermission here, and I'll be back as soon as I can. Hello everybody, we're back. Time to finish this up. Hope you all had a good break. The company that we keep. Ah, Frakirian. You're looking well. I take it you managed to squeeze in some rest. I hope you came for tidings from Kryle. I'm afraid we're still waiting. Uh, but we do have some old scraps of news to share. Some odd scraps of news to share. Scrap, she says. <laughs> Lunar primals have been popping up all over the place. And the Alliance and says it has, but the Alliance has the situation well in hand, thanks to no port to Hori Boulder and the others. Meanwhile, 
Talks <laughs> talks with the beast tribes are going even better than expected. Encouraged by Ulda's progress with the Amalja, Amalja Gridania has opened negotiations with the Ixel, believe it or not. All of which is very obviously very encouraging. But with the Telophoroi still out there, it's not as if we can afford to lower our guard. Yeah. We're all gonna die! <gasps> huh? Begging your pardon, but I come bearing an invitation from your lands. Can you take that thing off when you talk? No. The council meeting has been through hell and down amigo. Your attendance is honor hum humbly requested. And, well, we were just talking about the alliance. May I ask what's on the agenda? I believe the intent is to share some of the news of the recent developments to discuss what might be done to combat the Telophoroi. In concert with the new allies, the Beast Tribes have also been invited. I would hope you would join us in the fight against the common foe. So the Alliance would bring all the Beast Tribes into the fold in a single stroke. An ambition plan! And given the delicacy of the negotiations, but may have one expedient one. Considering the threat we face, Indeed, my lady. And for the most part, I am told the beast tribes have agreed to attend. If the scions, too, are present, all of Eorzea will be represented. To arrange such a meeting must have been quite the undertaking, not only diplomatically, but practically. But who's going to represent the Spriggans? Huh? They want their shinies. Pray, inform the Alliance that we'd be honored to participate. We shall make for Alamigo without delay. I will burn in the thither without a curse. We look forward to, to receiving under a royal palace. And do come without the helmet next time. No. Well. Now that we've accepted the invitation, who is all going to attend? I move that you and Yashola lead our contingent, given how long you've worked with us each and summoning. It is only right that you be present, we promise, for this historic moment. I think we've all played our part in that little endeavor, don't you, Rikarian? I don't want to go! Oh. Oh, it might be whitely pleasant to claim a seat, I do agree, but by your leave, I shall remain here and lend assistance to the coordination of the defensive effort! I'm not coming either. Emmerich will be there. I'd rather not be interrogated. Very well, then. Those in mind to stay in the fort with we'll hold it. The rest of us make for our amigos, shall we? Why is Graha going? He's been here for like a week. Still looking at this thing. I mean, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. I, I get it. Actually, I don't get it. But you know, I'm sure you like it, and I can't understand your accent. I'm just gonna go. Why is Graha here? We've been expecting you. Some, <laughs> some, well, while some few guests have yet to arrive, the Alliance leaders are all present. Shall I show you in? Awkward.
<laughs> Lisa's remembering the last time she invited <laughs> Beast Tribes into Alamigo. Hi, hi, hi. Esteemed guests, you honor us with your presence. As there is much to discuss, let us begin. Information on our taken brethren you have, yes? Hear it, we would! <laughs> They're all tied up to goo walls. Ah! Beyond forgiveness, these featherless ones are! With rivers of blood shall they pay! Freed our people must be! Hold you responsible, we will! We too would see your kin liberated. But ere we attempt their rescue, we must first find a means to negate the risk of tempering. Without that, we will be unable even to approach the towers, let alone contend with their defenders. If all else fails, I've always found cannonballs quite effective. I like that point of view. And what of the prisoners? Would you see them slaughtered? Think for a moment. Ponder, consider, think. If Merlwib truly intended to bombard the towers, she would have done so by now. Remember, we came here to find a solution together, did we not? Thanks, Zada. Yistola spoke of defenders. I but offered a means to clear a path. Should you require it? Given the enemy's capabilities, we will all need to play our part if we are to have any chance of success. Or if any here should give less than their best, it will be to the cost of every living being on this star. The Paragon, the Empire, our very gods. How can we hope to prevail against such odds? That our foe is formidable, none would deny it. But our strengths are many and varied. In this chamber, I see masters of strategy, masters of magic, masters of the land, the air, and the sea. And together, there is nothing in creation we cannot overcome. I'm out. <laughs> Look anonymous face. <laughs> what is it, Soul Walker? Do you not express your passion thus? A little scrutiny will have bills, perhaps. <laughs> Suffice it to say. I am proud to be counted amongst their Aussie's finest. <laughs> we, Sir Hagen, will play our part. We kobolds have not forgotten the crimes the Overdwellers committed against us in the past. But today we look to the future as allies united in purpose. Look, all I'm saying is I have, like the best rep available with all of you. Ah, make mock of the Ixel the Paragon dance. Turns kin into puppets. Pits brother against brother. Free them from his grasp, we shall. As Patriarch Zadar will attest, the Scions have granted us a means to free your brethren from their thraldom. This boon we will gladly share, that your people might never be enslaved again. We accept! We accept! Praise me! <laughs> it's taken a while, but I do believe we might be one step closer to a world without primals. 
Would that mean Filio were here to see it? I mean, technically, doesn't she see everything? We still have a long way to go, and we're going to need a lot more pork seeds. But we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, but we have the pork seed factory now. If I may have your attention, there is one other point I would like to raise. As we can all agree, freeing those held captive must take precedence over every other concern. True. But experience has taught us that none save those with the capacity to resist tempering can hope to enter the towers unscathed. And even once inside, a still greater threat may yet await them, that which we call a primal. Needless to say, if we are to succeed, engaging with such foes can only ever be considered a last resort. And so I move that we seek to prevent them from being summoned in the first place. Yes! Both prayer and ether are needed for the ritual. Should either one be denied, the summoning would fail. Indeed. And so we must endeavor to discover the source of the ether on which the process depends. Do so, and it may present a way to halt the summonings, or perhaps even neutralize the towers entirely. A promising proposal. While you are conducting your investigations, however, we will need to remain vigilant, lest the Telophoroi commit further abductions and summon primals ere we have the means to prevent them. To stand a better chance of keeping our enemy at bay, we will do well to coordinate our defensive efforts, sending reinforcements to assist our neighbors when needed. I'm really liking this. It's, this is nice. It's, it really feels like the story is of that started at the beginning of Realm Reborn is finally kind of coming to a close. Like this is starting to wrap things up for this big final chapter. I see we are all in accord. I'm noticing that the Mughals are not there. I just noticed that. The Mughals are not present here. But what are we to call this proud fellowship of ours? I submit that the honor of naming it should go to the Scion whose brave efforts have done so much to unite Teosia. What say you, my friend? The, wait, you're asking me? To name something. <laughs> the reaction shot. It's just called the Grand Company of Eorzea. But that's the name I hear. <laughs> A fine choice. For there is none here who does not love Eorzea. Aye. In that we shall ever be united. United in our gratitude. <laughs> I stole that for no idea. <laughs> Does he and love Eorzea? <laughs> company of Eorzea was born. Aww. <laughs> He finally got his wish. How long have we dreamed of this moment? And now that it's here, I... Oh, forgive me. Might we speak outside? I mean, we can. But you owe me a soda. Well, now that we are out of shot of the other delegates, I hope you'll forgive me if I speak my mind. Let me begin by saying that I have dreamed of this day since the moment I first set foot on these shores, and I was heartened to see that all the people of Eorzea are pledged to their solidarity. 
Yet even as they uttered their declarations, all I could think about is the, was the conflict to come of the sacrifices that would have to be made and the lives lost. Inevitabilities that I still struggle to accept. But at least now there's hope. The formation of the Grand Company of Eorzea is a first step. Well, first of many. Many, many more. I think. Oh, no. It's kind of Santa. No, 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 no. Elder Seedseer. How might we be of service? I seek Master Arfanot's assistance in a matter involving Brindania's neighbors, the Seraphs. I know that you and yours have long kept a weather eye on the crystal train, the better to predict the coming of Ramos, and you'll be familiar with the Seraphs of Ashcrown Consortium. Through their dealings, they have cultivated relationships with not only the city states, but many of the other communities beside. Communities such as the Beast Tribes? Yeah, just so. And it is our hope that we may be able to use the self established lines of communication to coordinate the efforts of our new fellowship. Yet there are certain practical differences between the Trade Consortium and the Grand Company. If the Sifts are to perform their task effectively, they will require the Council of One versed in the operational aspects of Armed Force. An Armed Force found in the self-same goal in mind, no less. The Crystal Braves, yes! Forgive me, Master Alphanot, I know there is a painful chapter in your life, but the experience may yet be so the well. <sighs> in my hubris, I plotted a cause for the Crystal Braves, which stretched far beyond the Order's initial conception. One intended to pave the way for what I had been intending to call the Grand Company of Eorzea. But my plans all came to naught, built on the frail foundation of lofty ideals. The Order was doomed from the first collapse of the weight of more worldly interests. I have no wish to see the new endeavor suffer the same fate. May have I asked too much of you? Not at all. You may count upon my assistance as for what little, little, little it is worth. By your leave, I shall prepare a report, including a list of recommendations, drawing on the lessons I learned from my failures with the Crystal Graves. You have my gratitude, Master Elfie Note, and my trust. When your report is ready, Pray, share it with the selves. With your guidance and honest effort and goodly soul gathered here this day, I have no doubt that this fellowship shall move in the saddle of the temple of Roy and flourish. Until we meet, my friends. Before committing anything to writing, there are a number of people whose thoughts I'd like to, to hear. Former Braves, you understand. Might you join me in seeking them out? I can't think of an excuse not to. Well, I'll be grateful for your help, grudging or not. I'll join you. If you're planning on the canvas of opinions of your former comrades, it will be a lot qu quicker if we share the task of questioning them. Well, then maybe Graha can lend a hand as well. I shall accompany Thancred back to the Rising Stones. Between us, I dare say we will do accurate enough account of the day's events. We should be grateful for your <laughs> company, Graha. I shall explain the details on the way. Short version, Alphanode once tried to create a grand company that could, like, be in charge of everything, and he messed up. So what's the plan, brother of mine? Well, before discussing the task at hand, I should probably admit that the report is, I proposed is largely written. Not long after that fateful day in Ulda, I penned a detailed account of the organization's history, and from the events that led to its inception to the failings that brought about its demise. This I did primarily as a means of taking some semblance of responsibility, never did I imagine that it might be referred to by those seeking to form a similar organization. 
And while I made every attempt to be objective, the account was mine alone. Its events viewed by the single perspective. For it to be of use, however, I think we need to broaden the encompass the viewpoints of all those involved. Only the, that then can it answer the quest question that seems to be the most crucial. Namely, why, after the Crystal Braves disbanded, did some of the members choose to remain with us and others did not? Well, I see. You think the answer will tell us something about the nature that ties our new brand company together? And this knowledge will help us prevent it from falling apart when its bonds are tested. That's my hope, yes. I would ask for more... Co I would, uh, but the questions I would ask are uncomfortable to some. As the former commander of the Crystal Braves, I doubt that those abandoned the cause would welcome my inquiries. Well, then Graha and I will just have to try. Meanwhile, the two of you can talk to the ones who kept the faith. A fine suggestion. Have care, however. Some of my former comrades are of questionable character. So keep your wits about you and let us convene in Gridania later on. If you have no objections, I think we'd begin with Riol and Alian. Memory serves. They are uh, at Castrum Oriences. Attending a uh, Castrum Orions and attending an intelligence briefing. Let's meet up with them there. Yay, real! I like real. bringing you two here. Why would anything new big meeting, would it? In a manner of speaking, I have been assigned a task, you see, which requires the assistance of the former members of the Crystal Braves. Talk, 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 talk. So you want to know why we decided we stick with the science, eh? Well, ain't easy thing to put in words. You had dental. As I once explained to Varkirian, I spent a long time agonizing over my fail failure to alert you to the traitors in our mists. For my negligence, I was captured along with the others, and we were powerless to prevent the tragedies that ensued. Now, day doesn't buy you. Don't think back to those fateful events. By joining the Scions, I hope to redeem myself, and I will continue to serve the cause as long as I'm able. <laughs> but that wasn't my only reason. When we finally reunited the Rising Stones, you refused to blame anyone but yourself for the fall of the Crystal Braves. And in spite of everything that happened, everything you had suffered, you took us back without a moment's hesitation. We would have not blamed you had you turned us away, but you gave us your, your, tr your trust instead. What else we could do to try to repay it? And you have dental. Nothing else what, as for me old day, I was felt these silence had something in common with me old crew. The duty of the strong is pretending to weak. That was our creed. I still live by it to this day. But as time goes on, I learn the strength that comes in many shapes and sizes. From Ori Boulder to Mistress Tataru. We've all got something to offer. And not one of us doing it for personal gain. We believe there's more things... <laughs> There's more important things among that and worth protecting. That's what the signs are all about. I'm not a loss for words. Thank you, my friends. To hear this means more than you know. Forgive me, Vakirian, could you? We just said it's, it was Alpha Note's fault. <laughs> Well, the founding ideas were something to be proud of, but ideas don't make a crew. For every swab who signed up with good intention, there's another who's just in it for the coin of glory or both. Ours was quite a desperate band, and what I'll never forget 
forgive Ilbert. The fact that we managed to function at all was, I think, a large part to his efforts. Just a pity he was doing it for all the wrong reasons, eh? I take it as a bad apple. You say the Braves are the barrel of them. Not like the Scions. We might look at a ragtag bunch of misfits, but deep down we've all got that shared sense of purpose. Why? Because Tartaru sifted out all the glory. Hunters, before they could make it through the... Oh! <laughs> This is more of that sentence. <laughs> because Tartaru took all the glory. <laughs> the glory hunters before they even came in the door. I see. So while our ranks compromise a diverse range of people, each of their own individual strengths, we were already known had purpose. Thank you, my friend. With your permission, I'd like to make a record of this discussion and refer to it during drafting my recommendations. Till we meet again. One of three quests done. On official business. Well, I think I'll be taking up time of our colleagues. Why am I conscious that less life affirming testimonies will wait? Let's make our way to the Gridonia and see what the others have learned. Why weren't you guys at the meeting? Huh? There's a smile and a fire and blood. You can't deny nothing except new letters. Nothing, nah, nah, none. Good boy. Postal prowess has earned you carrier level 22. Letter carrier's heart is a restless one. Always in the thing of the next job. The deputy poo smoke has got another letter for you. You'll be outside Limits of the Menses Bulwark Hall. Run to him, Koopo. Run. Don't walk. Doesn't answer the question. Why weren't the Moogles at the meeting? <laughs> the Otter Otter! Always love the Otter Otter. Gridania. Oh, well. Lancer's Guild. What, are we, are we meeting Estinian? <laughs> Thanks to Tataru's ever dependable intelligence, we managed to track down a handful of former Braves. Without any great difficulty. Something were forth some were forthright, others less so, but I think we heard enough to get a picture. I want to warn you, Alphano. Some of their comments were quite harsh. <laughs> I can well imagine. But their opinions are no less vital to the report. Let's see the unvarnished truth. They said my ears were what? Thank you. I'll set about adding your findings to my own. In the meantime, pray go ahead to Little Solace and seek out Elder Frixio. I'll join you anon. Wait. We get to go talk to Frixio! got the little kitty or the big kitty really big kitty super omega big kitty I'm still waiting for the fattest cat trial battle he has awakened bring forth the kitty nip boom 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 Hey, 
Frick's you. <laughs> Welcome, brave one, and friends of brave one. How good it is to see walking ones again so soon after the meeting. Should this one perform the customary dance of greeting? <laughs> no, no, be at ease. It is true, these ones once delighted in making walking ones dance, but no more. Horned one, Kani Sana, said that walking ones would be coming to Little Solace. Imperial ones also invaded Sylphlands and abducted many of these ones. So these ones will be glad to bear messages between fighting friendly ones. That's heartening to hear, Elder. That is heartening to hear, Elder. It will require all ones to work in unison to stop the Telophoroi. These ones will try very hard, of course, but in matters of war, these ones have little experience. Any advice walking ones can provide would be most welcome. Oh, another pretty head, silver one? In quite a hurry, it seems. I say, you must come quickly. What is the matter, Alpha Note? Could tell me you can't read my handwriting. What? No. A twin adder officer accosted me just about to set out. Charlay and the Senate envoy. Who's set to arrive at Gridani at any moment? An envoy. An envoy. Could it be that Corral has managed to sway the forum? We shall know soon enough. And there's more. The envoy has requested to see the two of us in attendance with the elder seats here. R really? I can see that they might want science to be present, but us... Wait. It isn't who I think it is, is it? It is. I could scarcely believe it myself, but when I acquired it as the envoy's identity, I was told it was one... Fortunate Livelio. You're our father. Well now, the fact that a serving member of the forum journeyed here would be surprising enough, but for him? Quite. I glean from this that they are taking the matter seriously. That may be, but why him and not one of the 98 forum members? Unless he volunteered for it. It has probably been a long time since you've seen your father, is it not? Could it be that he is concerned for your well-being? Perhaps, but he has always been reluctant to discuss his work with us. Indeed, whenever we were to write our parents, it's invariably our mother who responds. Nevertheless, I welcome the opportunity to meet with him after so long, even if it is secondary to our true purpose here. Oh, Elder Frixio, though that I am to cut our visit short, we must return to Gridania. Please, pray, accept my apologies along with my report. Oh, this one will need her glasses. Oh, this one already has her glasses. <laughs> that is a, that is a this one joke. Never mind, there will be time to talk later. This one won't keep walking ones from urgent matters. Go. The audience will be held on the lotus stand, where the Elder Seed Seer awaits now. Let's be on our way. Well, yeah. now we're going right back. Hey, it's my Chocobo. It is very foggy today in the shroud. Although with the lighting and everything, it kind of looks like uh, the city I live in right now with pollution and everything. Our air quality has been some of the worst on record.
was actually driving around today and thought I was looking at it like with the sun going down and all the pollution and everything. I was <laughs> just like, wow, that actually does feel like I'm living in a post-apocalyptic cyberpunk movie. Seeds here. Welcome, warrior of light. The seeds here are waiting for you within. After all this time away, it'd be good to see my father, even if it isn't, even if it is at an official meeting. 99 may seem even rather a lot of members, but the forum was founded. Every member of the age of Charlotte was given an equal say in the governance. Many of the institutions that are selected today were established by people's vote, at least not all the studium. As Ali said, we're constantly reminded during our time there, the examples look to be achieved through absolute democracy. My friends, thank you all for coming so swiftly. Word of the Master for Russia and Ireland. Visit was taken as per Christmas surprise. The last members granted Mrs. Carr permission to speak to Sharon and said, we did not anticipate so promptly a reply. Much less that it would be delivered by a member of the forum. What? What? The nature of that reply will be, we will soon discover. <gasps> Flowers! I like his haircut. Elder Seeds here. I thank you for granting me this audience. Who are you? <laughs> I am Fortuno Levea, here in my capacity as representative of the Forum. Fortuno? It is I who should thank you, Master Fortuno, for journeying so far and so swiftly. Would that our first meeting could have been under happier circumstances. I think I nailed her voice. It has been too long, Father. You look well. Do not I speak to me. Amelians will be glad to hear that you are taking care of yourselves. How is Mother? She misses you terribly, of course, but is otherwise a picture of health. Circumstances apart, I'm grateful that our meeting has afforded me the chance to be reunited with my children at long last. And I believe I also owe you thanks for the hospitality you showed my father, Louis Wa, during his sojourn in Eorzea. All thanks we owe to him. In the days prior to the seventh umbral calamity, it was your father's tireless efforts which granted us a means to vanquish the primals. Were it not for him, our strength would have been quite spent by the time the Empire arrived. That Gridania still stands is in large part his achievement. He was a great man. He would doubtless have been moved to hear you say so. I must confess, however, that I opposed his decision to intervene. Well, yeah. Duh. And my position remains unchanged. Well, thanks for coming all this way. Bye. To chart the course of history, not to change it. I am familiar with the Charlian stance. It is more than that. It is our way of life. Who we are. But I came here not to deliver a lecture, but the Forum's answer to your request. Charlian will under no circumstances intervene in the conflict between Eorzea and the Garlian Empire. Oh, okay. Yeah, a letter would have sufficed. 
May I ask for what reason the Forum has come to this decision? The final days spell the end not only for Eorzea, but the entire world. And we the will be happily days. right about it. Pray spare me your hyperbole. This conflict is no more than the latest in a series of petty squabbles between yourselves and Garlemald. One in which Charlian will take no part. If the final days were truly upon us, we would know. Father, you must ask the Forum to reconsider. You may feel safe on your little island across the waves, but if you imagine the Telophoroi will leave you be, you are mistaken. They mean to kill us all, themselves included. Alphano is You're right. kind of crazy. We have seen what the enemy is capable of, the lengths to which they'll go. This is no time to turn a blind eye. If Eorzea falls, so too will Charlia. So if you truly love our homeland, you will join us. Now, before it's too late. Now. You knew better than to raise your voice to your elders. It seems I was wrong. Wrong to ever let you leave, Charlia. Uh -huh. I consoled myself that your time abroad would instill in you some hint of restraint, of discipline. Wow, their dad's a jerk. But I see now that Eorzea has made fools of you both. Have you forgotten why it was that I so vehemently opposed your grandfather's departure? Mm, because he wanted to take the supply of Mountain Dew? For all his wisdom, his only solution was to go to war. Death, devastation, ruin. Even those who claim victory are scarred for life. What prize could ever justify such sacrifice? It is the duty of the learner to avert such tragedy. By fanning the flames of war, you forsake all you once held. To ignore the plight of those who conceivably save is not li wisdom, it is indolence. Better to fight and fail than wait for the axe to fall. I'll go with the middle one. I like that one. I see your friend shares your misguided ideals. But unlike him, you should know better. The, he, you know what he actually reminds me of? He reminds me a bit of Garlemald. Or at least Garlemald before, before they essentially went nuts um, and collapsed in on themselves. Uh, but where they thought, you know, it's like, we are the civilized ones. Everyone else is primitive, backwater, you know, so-and-sos. I'm, I'm not wrong. He sounds pretty much the same way. By espousing such barbaric notions. See? Right there. Place all we have worked for in jeopardy. Alfino, Alize, as of this moment, you shall no longer bear the name of Levy. Wow. Screw you, dude. What? Father. How you choose to live your lives is no longer my concern. If you wish to walk the path of ruin. I will not stand in your way. Master Fulchino, while Charlian may have no intention of intervening in this conflict, we can still part as friends. Will you not stay and speak with us, that we might learn of Charlian's hopes for the morrow? I have said what I came here to say. Any further discussion would be meaningless. With you primitives. Alize. How can you stand there and watch him walk away? How can you let this happen? Oh. 
It is we who walk the path to ruin? Time will tell. So that's what he came here to say? That we're fools for having the temerity to try to defend ourselves against the Talafaroi? And as for the rest... Like it or not, that was the forum's decision to watch from afar while Eorzea burns. Father was all but a messenger. He could have handed down the judgment, could have... Could think of nothing to say that would possibly sway him. I still can't. To have prolonged the discussion would have changed little, for it is not our f Master Fortuner that would have been persuaded by the form as a whole. The decision was made all before the end of Christ, for the Christmas Eve. Nor is it not to be changed, and now, so we shall face the total life of war without their aid. Yeah, forgive me, but I have no intention to help us. Then why would they go to the trouble of sending an envoy in the first place? When they do not just simply keep their counsel as they are wont to do. <laughs> I like how they all hear that. Rekinian, has uh, Master Fortuno arrived yet? Then as I feared, my efforts were in vain. I pleaded her case to as many foreign members as I could, but they flatly refused to discuss the matter. Now, I mean, that's not exactly true. I should say that they were ignored every word I said on the subject without exception. It was almost unnerving. Could it be they're hiding something from us? This may go some way to explain Master Fortunode's uh, performance. When he said that they would know if the final days were truly upon us, I dismissed it as pride, but what if they genuinely have n they know how the world will end and simply disagree with us about the circumstances? That, I don't know, but something tells me that they're not as unconcerned about the Talafaroi as they claim. If their threat was not real, why else would they be so standoffish and secretive? I would very much like to delve deeper into this, but I'm afraid I've exhausted every avenue of inquiry. Nor have I fared any better with my other mission. Researching Heidelin in the Ethereal Sea, I have enlisted the top help of top experts in the field, but it appears that the form has forbidden anyone from cooperating with us. Obstructed I had every turn. So it would seem, but don't lose heart yet. With all the knowledge and acquaintances we have between us, I'm sure we'll find a way forward. To that end, I would like you to join me. I would like you all to join me here. When the time is right, of course. I'm aware that matters in Eorzea are on a knife hedge. But with your permission, I'd like to start making the necessary arrangements. Please do, Kral. Excellent. Obviously, keeping the Talafaroi at bay must take precedence, but with luck... You'll be able to make the journey to Charlayan ere long. It may take a while to secure entry for you all, but I'll let you know when everything looks in order. Look for yourself. Look after yourselves in the meantime, won't you? Your speculation can't. Your speculations give me cause to hope. If these seeds will bear fruit, I cannot say. Where it is possible the Shardowns hide some secret truth from us, there can be no certainty the exposure will prompt them to change part. And also, at the present, we must need to confront the plight in which we find ourselves. The Forum has refused our request for aid, and it appears to us alone to contend with the Telephoral. Even with all of Eorzea standing united, there are no guarantees that we will prevail. What does Charlie intend to do if we fall? Fail. Interesting. No, uh... No, uh... Money option on that one. And the final quest. Death unto Dawn.
While Charlie and Stone seem to be disappointing, we cannot allow ourselves to be distracted by the challenge ahead of us. There is more and more to be done. I shall be giving a share in the firm's response with my counterparts in the Alliance. Meanwhile, I will ask the science. Grave tidings, walking ones! Grave, grave tidings! Calm your Calm yourself, my gentle friend. What has occurred? This one went to go see feathered ones and send terrible news. Destroying ones have appeared in Zelfatol. Zel 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 Jeez, I cannot say that word. Destroying, uh, destroying ones have captured and frightfully godly ones. Feathered ones doesn't stand a chance and sent flapping and squawking. When did this happen? Is it too late to help them? Too late, yes, much too late. T luckily, the stirring ones were only passing through and continued on west. Feathered ones were, who did not fight were left unharmed. West. That would be Curthus. My lady, the Ishgardians report that the Talafaroi have emerged from the eastern highlands of Curthus at a marching at speed. Though their purpose has not yet been determined, the Cartano Flats would seem to be the most likely destination, and Lord Amorak has already dispatched his forces. I request immediate support. Tell him he shall have it. It is I must come for the Grand Company of Lorazza to prove its worth. Well, mayhap it is a mercy that we don't have time to stew on misfortunes. Come, my friends, let's make haste to Cartano. This one almost forgot. Destroying ones were said to be led by clack cackling robed one. This one must see all the way. Van Daniel, Van Van Daniel, who else? It was only a matter of time before that grinning maniac showed himself again. I shall have an airship ready to take you to the Cartonero. Please see your preparations to report to the landing with our host. At once, my lady. Let us away. Airship landing. I am so glad they added the airship landings to the uh, Aetherite. It was always like the biggest annoyance. Especially trying to figure out where it is. I haven't checked. Is it actually on the one at a... Uh... You too. Like an Ishgard? I know they did it for uh, Shiragane, despite the fact that Shiragane doesn't have airships that go to, I think, anywhere but the Prima Vista. Vicarian, who had seen Fordola here, has come all the way through to Britannia to find us. I've explained much of the situation, but she insists her business is urgent. I will come over sooner if someone shut up and come with me. is to see you.
Yeah, he just put together. I arrived a lot sooner than expected, eh? The day I crane my neck up at you. Ha uh ha. -huh. Only because you're sitting down. Unless. Unless I grew really tall. So. The Chirurgeons say I may never walk again. Oh, there's wheelchairs apparently in Eorzea. Well, at least he's not dead. Come on, Alfino, it could be worse. Besides, I didn't come here to dampen the mood. Quite the opposite. I came here to have All a kegger. All I wanted was to fight for a cause I believe in. But my fighting days are over. So I want you to fight in my stead. Be the hero I can't. I am no hero. I am a mathematician. That's what they all say, though. No one ever calls themselves a hero. Even the ones who eat primals for breakfast. It's for others to decide. He's right, you know. I only ever called myself... myself. Everyone else said I was a hero. It sucks, comes with expectations, and all of a sudden everyone's like, Help me, help me, help me. All I want to do is go back to sleep. Not now. Okay. You already are a hero. To me and countless others. We see you doing your damnedest to protect us all. And you're not alone, are you? There are people who believe in you, just as you believe in them. This is what's going to spur him to, to job change into Sage in the next expansion, isn't it? Cordolis is like, why am I here? I know what's at stake and how many people are depending on you. But I believe in you. Believe that you'll see it through. That's why I'm entrusting my dreams to you. Like Abba and Owly once entrusted their dreams to me. There was a time when I would have borne the weight of such expectations without a second thought. But now, I know just how heavy that burden can be. So I won't. Tell the truth, Bye. I'm beginning to wonder if I chose the right path. Sacrifices will inevitably be made for the sake of the ideals I uphold. Maybe... I am not the person I thought I was. The person you think I am. I wouldn't presume to tell you. But I will say this. In spite of everything, you've come this far. To Gridanio? The road ahead might not always be clear, but you've never been one to give up or take the easy way out. And everything you do, you do for others. For a brighter future. I'm proud to call you my friend. Are well, you? I've said my piece, so I'll let you go. I know you've got more important things to be doing. Oh yeah, there's like a war on or Just something. Give what I've said some thought, alright? Now, for Dola, take me to get some food. I shall, my friend. And we will meet again soon, I promise.
nothing left for me to do but wave and smile. You've got a pretty narrow view of what it means to be a hero. Do you know that? Yeah. Shut up and take me to get something to eat. You think they're all forged in the fires of battle? That it's all about being brave and killing villains? Well, that's what D&D &D taught me. Carry on their fight. But theirs isn't the only one. There are other ways you can make a difference. If you stop feeling sorry for yourself and put your bloody mind to it. There's not much chance of me living the quiet life with you around, is there? If you're content to twiddle your thumbs thinking of what might have been, that's your lookout. Well, I reckon you've got some fight left in you. And I reckon you might be right. And I reckon this There's wheelchair a has a rocket launcher. Friends, I'll bloody well find it. I mean, to be fair, I mean, look at what Tatara does. She could literally just... I don't know where it does everything. Well, time for the big finale. I'll be ready for this, gents. You can tell me later what that was about, but judging by the elephant on its jaw, it seems to have done him some good. Vancred and the others have just left the Rising Stones, and according to the communications officer, Amalja and Kobold Folches are bound for Kachano as we speak. They mean to keep the promise they made in Alamigo. We must do the same, by saving as many of the temper, tempered kin as possible. Anyway, the airship's ready to depart. We should get going. Upon joining the Battle of Cardano, several cutscenes will play in sequence, yes, I assumed. Your progress to the battle will be saved at certain points. In the event that you are defeated, you will be able to try again for the most recent of these. Please note that if you enter the battles associated with quests or log out from the game, your progress will be lost. Uh oh. Always comes back to cart now. My fellow Scions, as I am sure you will have heard, we can expect no help from Charlie, nor are we any closer to discerning the Telophoroi's grand design. And now, our adversary moves against us in unprecedented numbers, compelling us to answer in kind. The outlook, in short, is bleak. Yet though our foes are many, and we but few, we may still tip the balance in Eorzea's favor. I brought snacks. Of course. We will do what we always do, deal with the ones our allies can't. A less than daunting prospect, judging by your expression. Could it be that you've dispelled your lingering doubts, Alphino? Oh, I doubt I ever will. But as my friends have kindly reminded me, I have come this far, and that must count for something. It counts for you riding an airship from Gridania. Gods be good, Alphino. That's what we've been trying to tell you all along. Pay attention next time, so dummy. Right, you can be remarkably dim at times. There is such a thing as overthinking, you know. <laughs> I suggest that we continue this conversation after the battle? It would appear that Telophoroi have already arrived. I'll do what I can to cure the tempered, but they'll have to be incapacitated first. Have care, my friends. 
for none can say wherefore our foe did choose this fateful field to be our battleground. Whatever may transpire, pray grant him not the pleasure of deterring you. Yeah, what he said. Loading, loading. <gasps> Yay! What are we doing? Listen well, my friends. The Talaferoi are sweeping across Kata now. As for the Asian, he was briefly sighted above the battlefield. He has since vanished. He is likely to something. Thus far, the movements of the lunar primals have proved to be difficult to protect. Even we post a... I'm cutting me off constantly. The primals are our primary target. Understood. Prepare yourself. Oh snap! I'll just take these two and you guys can finish off all the others, okay? going on here? I assume I'm following them. Oh good, I went the right way. Science spread across the field. Alice and Graha take to the Tell of Roy. Ooh, do I get to play as different people? Nice. That's interesting. Allow me. Do I just get infinite, like...
Oh yeah, uh, Angelo's following me around. That was crazy. Yeah, let's cure the tempered. How do I do that? Oh, I have to click Angela. Angelo, help people. I feel pretty, oh, so pretty. I feel pretty and witty and psychotic <laughs> do you see that the glyphs <laughs> yes how worried should we be Only a witch who cast the glyphs can use magic inside of them. I learned that from books. Listen well and judge for yourself. Though I can see the ethereal currents, I had not thoroughly examined those that the flow at the heart of Cartano. But now I am here, things have become much clearer. The flats conceal a theoretic confluence, much like the pillars of Azam the Azam Steppe, but in greater scale, far greater. The glyphs of Fendale are conjuring conjured reach into the very midst, and I believe they know their purpose. Should the lunar primals destroy them, it would likely star spark a chain reaction that would potentially obliterate the confluence entirely. The resultant disruption to the flow of ether would sow chaos among the elements, disrupt prompting earthquakes, floods, tempests large enough to lay waste to the realm. That would be the cometh to a little surprise. We should protect the confluence at all costs. Defeat Lunar Odin! Does he have Malefica, Lord of Crowns combo, Scrolls, Benefic, Helios, Fix Sign? Okay. What does Fix Sign do? Oh, okay, it's the.
Gotta protect that confluence. Oh, and probably everybody else too. kind of weird to get used to is just Still keeping everybody up. Somehow. Crazy fight. Sorry, I'm, I'm not saying much. This is just kind of like constantly trying to keep up with all these. Oh, Zentets again. This is. There we go. Ooh. Never good with <laughs> no one starts doing Zen Tets again. Yay, we did it. We killed Moon Odin. As a healer thing. What? Of all the weird primals. At least we get to listen to the cool music, though. Okay, so let's see. I have Medica to heal. Break to slow down nearby things. And prevent spell casting. It's probably important. Foul combo. Blizzard to regain mana. Cure two. Okay.
Oh yeah, I should probably heal myself. Oh boy. Well, this might be bad. myself I'm not getting anywhere near as much done on this as I wanted. This is, this is bad. No, break. I don't know if it was that too bad? Was that not good enough? I don't know. We didn't kill all the butterflies, I know that much. But it's dead, so I'm I'll, I'll take it. Oh, we get to do Ifrit. 
Now the computer's gonna play as me, and I get to play as a Stinian. <laughs> No Moon Garuda. <laughs> In the coming battle, you will fight as you. So, downside of this one, I am not a tank. I always hated these fertile nail mechanics. We must fight on. I know we must fight on, but you know what? Oh, jeez. Thank you. Oh. Let's get to this side. Oh. I feel like this one's going to be a, uh, just essentially a race against time on the confluence. So we're doing this again. I misread that one. Oh, jeez. What are you doing, Estonian?
so he summoned Nidhogg again. He can still do that. That's interesting to know. next yay you did good you did good warrior of light you did good. And thus another plan went up in smoke. I am beginning to see why Lord Xenos thinks so highly of you. <laughs> well, thank you. Wait. Is, it, is that a compliment? I'm not entirely sure. Not that this changes anything, you understand. You have merely earned yourself a stay of execution. I have thousands of ideas of how to kill you. <laughs> Good luck beating them all. How fair the tempests? We've treated as many as we can, but some were beyond help. Why? Okay, I'm very curious why he was trying to heal the, the, the Imperial dude, and why he was very upset when it didn't work out. We're just trying to understand the logic or the thought process behind that one. I have no doubt. He's just like, goes like, oh, I'll just try and save as many as I can, regardless of what side they're on. I have no idea. Probably somewhere along those lines. Do not hang your head so, brave silence. Though not all of our captured brethren could be saved, we are grateful for those whose minds have been restored. Yeah, I mean, that's literally better than anything else anyone's been able to do. It's like, it was that or kill them all, because... no more, and that is enough. So please, hold your heads high. Been quicker, but I'll do better next time. This is setting a very interesting tone for Endwalker because it's like 
the idea is you can't save everyone. And I'm really, like, wondering what type of hard decisions these characters are going to have to make in Endwalker. Because it's really setting that tone. at great cost but a victory nonetheless we must stay strong and press on isn't that right well I mean I guess <laughs> it really must count for something I just keep enjoying throwing words back at him. <laughs> the moon. too late. I wanted to just get a screenshot of that. Then I'll pick it up from the journey book. For those who don't know and aren't necessarily up to date on the lore, um, the reason why they keep looking so menacingly at the moon like that, and the moon looks so ominous in that shot, is the fact that uh, the moon is essentially the prison that has trapped the dark god Zodiac. Um, that's why the Asians always like to take people to the moon to talk to them and stuff like that. I always joke that it's their, their office. Ooh, I like that picture. Screenshot. But uh, essentially, the reason is, is essentially the, the lore goes that their god, Zodiac, the, the primal, supposedly, is sealed within uh, the moon after it was cast out from the source. So that's why the moon has kind of become this big thing and like it's like the final destination because it's, it's, it's essentially Zodiac manifest. Uh. Gotta love this song. I like that picture of Moon too. Oh, that's right. Bismarck did have a voice actor, cause he did. He talks when they go to talk to him on uh, the first. I suppose I could just skip the rest of this, really. If I I know it's rude to skip the credits, but it's, it's, I usually don't. I trust you all had a comfortable flight aboard the pride of Ishgardian fleet. Lest you not worry, the Bonanza has been towed to a nearby location to be retrieved at your convenience. You have thought of everything, Lord Amaric. May I say how much I appreciate the hospitality you afforded us on the way home. Think nothing of it. Our destination lay in the same direction, and it afforded me the perfect opportunity to learn how my errant friend had been since he last took his leave. It would seem you finally found a place to settle down. Leave me alone. I may go wandering of wandering the Far East. 
Returning to the most serious matters, while the Telophoroi have been driven from Cartano, tis likely the bulk of their forces yet remain. On the evidence of the Grand Company of Eorzea's first joint military operation, however, I am confident that we have potential to meet such a threat head-on, even without the aid of you, North. As such, while our forces will keep keep the Telophoroi at bay, I would ask you that you will apply your talents to the, to the task of neutralizing the towers. A sensible division of labor. Oh. The towers remain, so too will the threat of the lunar primals. And given our expertise in the field of aetherology, we may be very qualified to find a solution. That we are, especially since we should it happen to lie beyond the Alliance's dominion. There is a time and a place for formal investigations, of course, but certain secret won't be able to hide once the enterprising individuals may venture. Ah, sorry. So certain secrets are wont to hide where only enterprising individuals I think I completely missed there wasn't a apostrophe on that. I could agree nothing I could not agree more. There are none better suited to this task upon whom I would rather rely. On behalf of the Alliance, I thank you. We look forward to receiving any information you are able to uncover. And with that I must take my leave. Should you have need of the assistance, pray do not hesitate to ask. Fare you well, my friends. I confess, I had an hope to study the towers more closely, vital as they are finally to the, to the Tolofroy's plans. I think we can descend their ultimate function. We will be one step closer to the enemy's grand scheme. Should we succeed in neutralizing them, it is all but certain that the Tolofroi will mount an all-out invasion. And then it will begin. And those who are the hearts of the chaos will come for us. For you. Yet in the end, our true nemesis will be the calamity to end all calamities. The final days themselves. Yes, all right, Alphano. We need a plan. No importance. With Stankrit so eloquently pointed out, we are in the position to seek information from all pla manner of places, not least... Charlayan. According to Kryle, the forum may be more secretive than ever of late. While this may be related to the appearance of the Telophoroi, a matter of speculation. One thing is clear, the forum is determined to keep us from discovering the truth. Master Forshano performance at the Lotus Stand was enough to convince me of that. The men are bare with further investigation, I do hardly concur. Nor can I think of a more promising place to look for answers we seek on the matter of towers. The Shalian hath ever been the wellspring of ethereal knowledge. I care not where we go, here or there, my lance will be ready. And what of you, Vrykyrian? Might you be persuaded to join us? That means I have words with Forshano. Only after I do! If he and his friends in the form think they can leave it alone, we'll leave them alone, and if they ignore us, they're in for a shock. It appears we're in agreement. We simply have to wait for Kral to secure the necessary permissions. In the meantime, there is a matter I would investigate. Does it involve tall structures? By strange coincidence, it does. At present, I only have a creeping suspicion, but with your help, I will soon figure out whether my fears are warranted. Learn, the, learn shush. I don't know why. Meanwhile, in the Garlean capital. Capital. C c capital. Words. Yeah, that's what I thought.
In case you're wondering how the Reaper job ties into things. Those Aorzeans certainly are a stubborn bunch. Though I suppose you knew that already. My plan to redirect the ether from Cartano came to a rather less than satisfactory conclusion. It was, in many respects, an abject failure. I find this very amusing. Which does, of course, raise the question of where we are going to procure the requisite amount. The obvious solution would be to draw on resources a little closer to home, though that would require our dreamer to dream a trifle more deeply. Dreamer to dream a trifle more deeply. So be it. The dreamer will not complain. Then let us begin the preparations at once. With the gateway of the gods complete, all that remains is to gather the necessary ether, and our prize shall be within reach. Yeah, that's. I, I had a hunch that, like, the gateway of the gods, that's probably what they're talking about with the towers. My hunch is that they're building something to essentially go to the moon, or crack open the moon, or something like that. Oh dear God! That's what they've been doing with the ta with the capital. It creepy. The time has come to fulfill your heart's desire, my desire, to relieve those wretched creatures of their meaningless existence. He does talk a lot, doesn't he? While I await you, I shall drink a sea of souls and gorge myself upon the darkened moon. Then you shall come. And the stars shall bear witness to our final contest. He's getting a little excited about this. What the heck was that noise? Uh, creepy Rory noise. Was that the dreamer? I don't know. As I thought, the ethereal currents have been disturbed here too. It was the same in Thanalan. Make that every location we surveyed. And the strength of each current has diminished dramatically. Far more than could be attributed to a natural occurrence. Hmm. What tidings bringest thou from Dravania? We took a number of readings, and noticed that the closer we were to the tower, the lower the etheric density became. In short, the towers are drawing upon the land's ether, which would explain how they were able to carry out the summoning. Oh, okay. Our allies must be informed of this. We should return to the Rising Stones and have Tataru relay our findings to them. Hear me. Hear me. 
Hear me. Hear me. Huh? Darkness comes. comes. And with and it, with it, the end. The, end. the fate, fate of the star, the star is in your hands. Your hands. Is that Heidelin? Everything all right back there? So, Heidelin, of note, of interesting note, is she has the Asian robes and mask. Or, I suppose you could say the uh, Amaratian. Or Amaratin. At solemn dawn, grim purpose shines and gazes cast towards moonlit sky. Thus does our final curtain rise, your steps to guide what end something. Well. That. I, I was saying, it's like Heidelin at the, at the end. I was like, if that was Heidelin, it's, I think it's kind of cool that they. Because, you know, according to the story that you were told by Emmett Selk, Heidelin was a primal summoned by another group of ancients um it, it's not fair to call them Asians because they were the Asians are those who survived the sundering um and were members of the the, the concordance not all people from the, not all ancients were Athians. But ancients, a rival corporation summoned Heidelin in order to um, keep Zodiac Architect. So it would make sense, though, that then why she would have the big white robe and the mask. Because um, she would be essentially in the image of other ancients like that, which we met a couple of, well, memories of ancients. And Amaro. Which, of course, I'll get to eventually here soon in the um, <laughs> uh, story, Shadowbringer story summary, which is slowly being developed uh, over on the landofod.net, uh, where you will be able to find the Shadowbringer story summary for a quick recap of everything leading up to Endwalker. Um, getting done in chunks right now. We're, we're currently, uh, currently editing the section on the Raktika Greatwood, and that'll be up hopefully by the end of this long weekend. Uh, you can also find both unedited and edited videos of these streams, uh, including Final Fantasy XIV playthroughs, uh, as well as my current project, which is the uh, Final Fantasy Retrospective, in which I have been playing through all of the Final Fantasy series starting from Final Fantasy 1 and working my way to it. We just finished Final Fantasy 2 and we're getting ready to start Final Fantasy 3. Um, so you can find edited, unedited videos, you can find articles, you can find a whole bunch of stuff over on landofod.net. Um, other than that, you can always check me out on uh, Twitter, at Vrykirian, where you'll be able to see me announce not only just make a bunch of stupid jokes and sometimes just be like a general pain in the butt to uh, people. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really like the like a super big jerk on there or anything. I just I just kind of poke fun at um certain at, at different people at times. I try I try not to be a jerk anymore. Uh, I I sometimes used to. I, I don't try to do that anymore. Anyway, I announce whenever I do uh, these uh, live streams. I announce it on there. Um, you can always follow me here on Twitch, which I always appreciate. Uh, still trying to work towards 50 followers. Uh, this is my current goal. Uh, I don't really have a deadline or anything, but you know, I always welcome a good follow. 
Um, and then finally on YouTube, if you just search the Land of Odd, you'll find us on there. And that's also where we host all the videos and everything. There's links to all of this on the Land of Odd.net. So easy way to find it is just go to the website. Uh, with that said, I think we're going to call it here for tonight. It's uh, it's been a long one. I think this is the longest stream I've done, possibly ever. Um, and I, I'm glad I'm glad I got to finish this. It was really fun. It was really cool to see all the cool story bits and everything leading into Endwalker. And uh, I want to thank all of you so much for uh, tuning in and checking it out. Um, that said, I will uh, see you guys next time. Thanks. <laughs>